Kenny, you ready for game time? Join me, Sal from Behind Eric Basketball, as I announce play-by-play. -play. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe, because now we're about to go live. Entering the pregame, we now present Sal from Behind Eric Basketball. And what's good, everyone? Welcome back in. Glad to have you guys back on the stream tonight. And here we go, the number nine seed, the Texas A&M Aggies, is taking on the number one seed, the... Houston Cougars battle of Texas for this matchup both of these teams are separated by less than a hundred miles should be a good game as it will be taking place out in the FedEx Forum in Memphis Tennessee Houston an eight and a half point favorite on the line for the spread Houston with a record of 31 and 4 overall 15 and 3 in the Big 12 finished in first in the regular season in the conference they are 12 and 1 in the last 13 games and this is going to be a physical, physical, gritty type of battle today. Two of the top teams in the nation. And offensive rebounds per game going up against each other. Texas A&M, the number nine seed in the tournament. Coming off a major thrashing over Nebraska in a victory. In the nine versus eight matchup, 98-83 to on Friday to get them here. Texas A&M had 14 losses this season. They played one of the toughest schedules in America, though. Record of 21-14. 9-9 nine nine in SEC conference played, tied for 7th in the conference. They finished with the same conference record as LSU did for this season. How about Clemson? Clemson with an incredible victory that, uh, over Baylor today. They're going to the Sweet 16. Unbelievable for Clemson, a team that got shredded against Boston College in the first game of their ACC tournament. It was over to the Sweet 16, and right now UConn is dominating Northwestern 39-18. to Alabama up by 9 against Grand Canyon in the second half, 42-33. to If you're new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell as well, and get ready for a physical, physical bloodbath type of matchup here. Texas A&M, they look like they were dead in the water. They were 15-13, and 6-9 and nine in SEC play back on February 28th. They lost four straight games in a row in late, to that point in late February. And then they have been red hot recently. 6-1 in the last seven games. They've been super under the radar, but much improved for Texas A&M for a preseason top 20 team. They've rallied off five straight games with 80-plus points in a row for A&M. Three straight games that they have scored 90 points or greater. They put up 98 a season-high win over Nebraska on Friday. They're averaging 75.5 points per game this season for A&M. And also, they're top 10 in the nation and fewest turnovers as well per game this season. Leading the nation in rebounds. First in the nation in offensive rebounds. Where this comes to play, they're taking on the Houston Cougars squad where... They have just been a constant NCAA tournament second weekend team for quite a bit of a while now. 2021 went to the Final Four, 2022 Elite Eight, 2023 Sweet 16. And they only have suffered four, four losses this season. Two of those losses were by a combined five total points in conference play there. First two were against Iowa State on the road, 57-53. to Lost at TCU, 68-67. After that, they got, got crushed by Kansas, 78-65. Went in a massive win streak. Lost in the Big 12 championship game, 69-41 to against Iowa State. But this team knows how to go and uh, bounce back and stack wins. They beat Longwood by 40 in the first round game, 86-46. to And they just got some deep run potential. In them. This is a super experienced roster. Got a lot of studs in the backcourt for Houston. They are led by the top defense in the nation, allowing opponents to score just 56.7 points per game. They're number 10 in the country in offensive rebounds. They're another team that loves to thrive upon second chance points. The thing that separates them is that they're top 10 in the nation in steals this year. Scrappy defense, first in field goal percentage defense, fifth in two point defense, 11th in perimeter defense. 
And uh, for Texas A&M, they got to find their efficiency and find their shots because coming up with second chance points might be tough against this Houston Cougars squad who also crashes the glass. What's good, uh, Lucas, Vegas, Clara, Mario, Daniel? Welcome to the stream, everybody, for this one today. Yep, UConn with a monster lead at halftime over Northwestern. The score in that game is UConn 40, Northwestern 18, Alabama leading Grand Canyon 42 to 33 with 16 minutes left to go. And uh, we'll be tipping off at around 12 minutes from now. This game has been pushed back a little bit due to Clemson and Baylor at the same site wrapping up a little bit uh, a little while ago. So we'll be tipping off around 11, 12 minutes from now. We'll be getting this game started here. In Texas A&M, I looked at their shooting efficiency numbers. They are bad. For uh, Texas A&M, yet they scored 98 points against Nebraska. They're 345th in the nation in field goal shooting percentage, 323rd in two-point shooting percentage, 348th in three-point shooting percentage. The inability to make a three here for Texas A&M, you're going to have to hit those type of shots today against Houston because Houston has one of the top interior defenses in all college hoops, but also uh, they do have smaller guards. So how you have to beat Houston is you got to be drilling your threes. In this game here against the nation's top defense. And this is going to be an interesting one tonight to see. That is for sure here. A lot of tough physical guards in the backcourt. Wade Taylor, the fourth leading Texas A&M. He's averaging 19 points per game this season. Top three in the SEC in scoring. And then Tyrese Radford's averaging 16 points per game. It's those two guys who have been carrying A&M this season. The lone two players who are averaging double figures on the roster between Taylor and Radford averaging 19 and 16 between the two each. And then over for Houston, more balanced attack. LJ Cryer, top scorer, a Baylor transfer, averaging above 15 points per game, a 40% perimeter shooter, 13 points per game, and 6 assists per game for Jamal Shedd. Just an absolute dog out there on the floor. He has been to multiple deep runs in the NCAA tournament for the second weekend. Um, Emmanuel Sharp averaging 12 points per game. So they got three legit studs out there in the backcourt for Houston. And then other guys that just crash and crash the glass. Multiple dudes that are able to come up and snag rebounds on you. And um, that's one of the things that they always do in Houston's system is that they put a lid on the rim and they just practice rebounding all the time for uh, for Houston here. They're going to take on A&M, who is low-key been just under the radar offensively, pouring in 90-plus points in the previous three. And those are the teams historically uh, that's given Houston problems in the tournament. You look at this one last year. Houston lost to Miami in a Sweet 16 where they got blown off the floor. If A&M's making their shots because Houston loves to slow down the tempo and uh, slow down the tempo and limit the game. And... Uh, Make sure that your shots are limited. If Texas A&M is efficient, then they have a chance at this one. But Texas A&M is in the 340s in field goal shooting efficiency, where that is the real, real question mark entering this matchup here is that A&M is going to have to have their best efficient game by far this season. And uh, they're going to have to have like a massive collapse from Houston on the glass in this game if they want to have any chance because A&M leads the nation in rebounds. Houston's right behind them. Both of the teams are top top uh, tier offensive rebounding teams. Whereas Houston, they're just, man, they're just locked down defensively. Right now, UConn doing their job. Hopefully the other one seed will do their job. There's been no major upsets in terms of the one seeds. It's been basically chalk besides Baylor losing to Clemson. And um, a couple of the first round upsets to James Madison over Wisconsin. And then... Kentucky losing and then Auburn losing, but most of that, the rest of it's basically been chalked the west of the rest away, most mostly. So uh, here we go. If you guys are new to the stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. We'll be tipping off in around eight minutes from now, eight fifty-five p.m. tip-off time in the Battle of Texas, A and M versus Houston. Grand Canyon pulls one in six against Alabama, forty-two to thirty-six. There's been a couple of technical fouls issued to Alabama. In this game, um, Nate Oates had one in the first half, and then Nick Pringle threw down a clipboard, and it exploded plastic pieces across the floor. Uh, referee gave him a technical late stage of the first half. By the way, UConn is destroying Northwestern 40-18 to at halftime. Grand Canyon's hanging in right now in this game against Alabama. Alabama's been in deep fall trouble throughout the course of this game. 
Yeah, big time effect on the transfer portal in the tournament. Yeah, Harrison Ingram for North Carolina. He was a massive pickup that he transferred from Stanford. He's been huge, so he's one of the keys that they picked up. Uh, Ryan Nemhard transferred from Creighton to Gonzaga, another key transfer pickup. Yeah, Clemson, big upset there over Baylor. Just crazy. The team that got shredded against Boston College in the ACC tournament. Boston against Baylor. Uh-oh. Grand Canyon's got a key player down. Is that tying Grant Foster? I think it is. Grant Foster. Ah. Oh, ah. Oh. Yeah, tying Grant Foster is down right now for uh, Grand Canyon. That's unfortunate. He, uh, he looked like he rolled his ankle in the last play. He's the top scorer. Sets the tone for this team for Grand Canyon. That's tough if he can't come back but he's gonna stay in the game this dude is a trooper this dude legit a trooper tying grant foster yeah that's a good question there um i'm gonna go gonzaga for that one i honestly think it's gonna be purdue but i it, if there's a difference i think it could be from coaching when mark few gonzaga is playing lights out right now so is purdue that should be a battle there what a game. What what a game that should be. And then I'd go Purdue over Duke. Duke, just, man, they were awesome today against James Madison. But they've got two easy draws in the bracket for them. But then again, Purdue just played Utah State. And Gonzaga, man, they, they crush Kansas. Like, you crush a Power 5, Big 12 school like that. That's special. Gonzaga's heating up at the right time. And they've flown under the radar this season. Grand Canyon came up with a steal. They tried to go for a slam dunk. They missed the slam dunk, though. 42-36. Alabama leads by six with under 14 left to play against Grand Canyon. Wow, there's a scrum for the basketball. Grand Canyon picked it up. I cannot believe that was not a tie-up right there. The camera kind of quit on that play. And Grand Canyon is going to head to the free to line. Alabama's in deep foul trouble. Grand Canyon honestly has a chance to win this one. Alabama just picked up their seventh. Grand Canyon's got four. Yeah, these ACC teams are taking the postseason by storm. That's awesome for BC. Five minutes away from tip-off. If you guys are doing the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. The number, number one defense in all college basketball, the Houston Cougars. This is going to be a... Big matchup in the backcourt. Physical, physical game here. Texas A&M loves to cause all kinds of havoc. They pressure you. They like to force you into turnovers, whereas Houston's going to play a slow, methodical pace. They're going to limit as many shots as possible that you take, and they're just going to lock down you, and uh, they're going to force you to be efficient. Texas A&M is by far a long ways from being efficient for Texas A&M. This is going to be a really, really interesting game. This should be like a low-scoring one, I feel like. Texas A&M, this team is riding high. They've dropped down 90-plus in the last three games, but you're facing like SEC defenses here for Texas A&M. You're facing defenses like Florida, Alabama, Kentucky, teams that's in like the 200s, the 300s in total defense this season. And now you got the number one defense in the nation right now. So this is going to be quite the matchup here. For a and M, you go from basically like Jackal and Hyde all of a sudden from the worst defenses for Power 5 schools in all college basketball to the top one in this game. Uh, no, I think Coach Cal is out for Kentucky. Um, those at ESPN, like Seth Greenberg, um, he's been defending Coach Cal. Uh, I think he's going to be out. Grand Canyon making this a block fest. They got a two-on-one. You got to convert. Oh, they do. They throw the door. It's a two-handed flush. It's a six-point game in that one. Alabama leads 45-39 to against Grand Canyon with under 13 minutes left. Grand Canyon's got some athletic dudes on that team. They crash the glass. They come up with blocks. They're right in the game, and they've put Alabama into foul trouble. So there's a good chance Grand Canyon can come back and win this game today. Hit us up in the chat. Who you guys like to win this one here? Houston or Texas A&M? If you're new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Ring the notification bell as well as we are going to be tipping off in around two or three minutes from now. We'll get started on this one.
right now the poll is leading Houston early on like in the first like five minutes it was going for Texas A&M now it's uh Going the other way to Houston. Houston comes in eight and a half point favorite now in the line over under at one thirty five and a half. Oh boy, <laughs> it's a funny one there from Brian. Oof, Mike McCarthy in the postseason just uh, never adds up right there. Bradley, welcome to the stream. Just four losses this season for Houston. Two of those came by four points or fewer. Looking to stack wins together for the Cougars. Texas A&M, 14 losses. Got a nine seed in the field. They had one of the most confusing resumes out of anybody. They were 15-13 and 13 and 6-9 and nine in the SEC in late February. Looked like they were dead in the water and well away from the NCAA tournament bracket. And then they stacked wins together. And Texas A&M in the last seven games, they have a 6-1 and one record where they've exploded for 90-plus points in the previous three. An exploding offense, hitting their peak at the right time for A&M, going up against the top-rated defense in college hoops, the Houston Cougars. Battle of Texas, 100 miles separate these teams apart, an hour and a half away from each other. Going to be a gritty, physical type of matchup tonight. Houston looking to bring their Houston energy from H-Town. This is a big, big game for both of these teams because whoever wins this one will face Duke in the Sweet 16. And the Sweet 16 game will take place in Texas as both of these teams are out in the Dallas, Texas region in the South region. Kelvin Sampson, the head coach, been so close the last couple of seasons. Tenth season at Houston, four straight second round weekend appearances, 2021 Final Four appearance, Elite Eight in 2022, 2023 Sweet 16, and making sure his team does not slip backwards and looking to take his team to his, their fifth straight second weekend appearance here at Houston. Buzz Williams on the other side, 4-1 and one record in second round games, 11-9 and in NCAA tournament games, pounding Nebraska. In the first round matchup, 98-83 on Friday. Here's the starters. Wade Taylor to Fort, Tyrese Radford, Manny Abaski, Solomon Washington, Wild Ends Levesque for Texas A&M. Houston, Jamal Shedd, LJ Cryer, Emmanuel Sharp, Javier Francis, and Jawan Roberts for the Cougars. Hit us up in the chat. Who you guys like to win this one here? Houston or A&M? 25 and 18 in his career in the NCAA tournament for Kelvin Sampson. He is 13 and 5 in the tournament with his record at Houston. No one seed has gone down, making sure it doesn't happen right here. There was an upset around an hour ago with Clemson, the sixth seed, winning against Baylor. Big 12 has struggled quite a bit here in the tournament. Same as the SEC. This is a big determining game to determine who will be get going to Dallas for the Sweet 16. Houston, white uniforms with their red numbers, red, red numbers, red letters with the Houston Cougars cursive out in the front. And maroon for Texas A&M for this matchup. White numbers, white letters for the Aggies. Felix, what's good? Ron in the stream. Welcome back in. Here we go, everybody. You guys like absolute dogs. We got them in this matchup today. Two backcourts going at it that have dogs all over the place. Both of these teams love to cause havoc, force turnovers, strip ball handlers. This should be an excellent game. Physical, grind it, gritty type of matchup. We have got it. Right to left on the floor will go Texas A&M. Left to right for Houston. That'd be Francis going up for the tip with a Wildlands Levesque here for AM. And here we go as we are underway at AM and controls the opening tip. Texas AM with the first possession, right to left on the floor. Top of the key here for AM with Manny Obaseki. Obaseki, a top 30 recruit from the class of 2021. Obaseki, turnaround jumper. He connects on it. If they're able to hit shots like that, they're going to take this one for AM. They've exploded for 90 plus in the previous three games. Yet they're bottom 15 in the nation of field goal shooting efficiency. First possession now for Houston. Jamal Shedd at the left wing perimeter. Shedd 
Loads the pass across the floor over to Cryer. Cryer right baseline dribble. Dumps it inside a key. Outside it goes back to Cryer. Push it out to the left wing. Catch and fire three. Houston no good. Came off the rim short. Offensive rebound back to the Cougars though. That's their specialty. That's what they love to do. Crash the glass. Come up with an offensive rebound. They got a good one right there. At the elbow, back out top. Here's a three straight away. Houston, right down the shoot. They got it. Emmanuel, sharp, bing, bing, trifecta from downtown. First minute of action right now. Texas A&M, a 15-point win, pouring up 98 on the board of the win over Nebraska. Deflected, almost intercepted. A&M came down with it. 40-point victory over Longwood for Houston in the 1 versus 16 matchup in round 1. Straightaway 3 came up short. Battle for the rebound. A&M able to come down with it. They shovel it downhill underneath, and Houston commits a foul. Now, was that on the pass or that on the shot? That's going to depend on whether this will be free throws or not with Wildlands Levesque here for Texas A&M. Jay Ramirez, welcome back in. Wow, that's awesome, man. So he's up to third right now in the bracket challenge. Levesque at the free to line representing Boxer Town in Brockton, Massachusetts. Rocky Marciano area. Off of Route 24. First free throw bricked off the back room. No good. Second free throw coming up here. Got it right down the middle. We're tied 3-3. Houston now with possession number two. This is a Houston team that can get up in games by the score of 16-2, 14-0 in some of their games in the Big 12 tournament. They looked for a lob, got deflected. A&M looks to run the floor here up the court. Radford, his layup attempt got blocked from behind. Able to get back for A&M. Another block by Houston. Not clean, though. Results in the foul. That's charged to Francis. This will send A&M shooting two more at the free throw line. So 18-21 now left to go in the first. Both of these teams attacking, attacking, attacking. On each other. And A&M's being more of the aggressor so far. To start off this game. Looking to push the pace. Houston will love to slow it down. Try to chop down as many opportunities as uh, possible. To make it as few. As many as that will be. A&M's first one is good. If you're new in the stream. Make sure to smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified for future live streams as well. A&M loves to put you into foul trouble and uh, get to the free throw line. That's their specialty too this season. Both of the free throws go down there for Tamu. So it's 5-3 now for A&M. Houston with a possession. Jamal Shedd crosses the midcourt logo. Puts the ball into the hands to LJ Cryer. On top sends it over to Francis. Out to the left wing Shedd. Shed bounce pass, drops it down, low block over to Roberts. Roberts across the floor, wide open, catching fire, three, splash. Emmanuel Sharp with another triple. Really going to make those threes for Houston. They got two of those right out of the gate in the first two minutes. A&M now with a possession. Dribble, drive inside, and that's a block. They got a back though underneath, and that's a bucket score by Radford. That's some pesky defense right there by Houston, but A&M just a lucky bounce, able to go back into the hands to Radford. Again, Houston, they've able to operate two threes off of skip passes across the floor to make those buckets. They have it at the left wing. Bounce pass down to the low block, being pressured. Dribble up inside a key here for Houston, and we get an A&M foul. That's going to be charged to Washington on his first personal foul. Yep, James Madison today was a no-show in that one. Dale, welcome on back here, man. Alabama up by 7 over Grand Canyon, 48-41. to This has been a physical game so far with multiple free throws right from the start. Jawan Roberts will shoot 2 for Houston. Houston has not been a solid free throw shooting team, shooting in the high 60s this season. So this tournament here, looking to see if they can make a bigger impact on that. They missed the first one. They have struggled when it comes down to free throws this season. Just carried by their defense. Second shot coming up here, looking for the tie at the line. Francis, and got the bounce, so that's good. Seven all. Seventeen and a half left to go. Texas A&M with a possession. Radford crosses the timeline. Radford crossover, backs his way inside the key. Spin cycle, Radford up, and no good. Tipped around, offensive rebound back to A&M. They lead the nation in offensive rebounds. Towards their right around the perimeter with Obaseki. Obaseki pass off to a step back three. Wade Taylor, no good. Rebound secure by Houston. And 
A loose ball follow picked up by A&M. This is going back to Houston here with just over 17 minutes left. Seven all right now. That's what Houston's going to do to A&M. They're going to force them to take as many threes as possible. This Texas A&M team is bad, bad from the perimeter. They're bottom 10 in the nation, shooting 29% from three this season. Houston with possession, looking to take the lead. Baseline dribble, skip pass, top of the key. Open three straight away, no good. Bricked off the back room by Cryer. Rebound secure by A&M here. They had a good opportunity. Cryer, 40% three-point shooter throughout his career. Quarter three, no good by A&M. Tipped out to the perimeter. Another offensive rebound. Wade Taylor drives. Bobbled it, got it back, though. Into the hands to Radford. Radford and Taylor doing the bulk of the, bulk of the scoring this season. Taylor's averaging 19. Radford's averaging 16. Only two guys in double figures. Kick out to the wing. Radford off to Taylor. Drives. Floats to the tier. Drop no good off the glass. Rebound secured by Houston. Jawan Roberts came up with a board. Cougars with possession. Three and a half minutes plus so far. At the right wing perimeter, it's Sharp. Sharp dribbles towards his left. Looking to turn the corner. Takes the three. He's been the hot hand. No good. Bricked off the back rim. Rebound secured here by AM. Slow start by Houston in the first four minutes so far. Wade Taylor at the top of the key. Puts the ball into the hands here of Radford. Radford dribbles over to the March Madness logo. 15 on the shot clock for Radford. Radford at the right wing perimeter. Radford, crossover, dribbles, inside, spin move, Radford, tough shot, no good, got fouled. And he'll have two coming up here at the free to line for Tyrese Radford. That's now Houston with their third personal foul in the game. Texas a with one. Kelvin Sampson, unbelievable right there. He is ripping the officials. He cannot believe that they called that a foul as he thought it was completely clean. But we'll take the first time out on the floor. 15-49 left to go in the first 7 all. Right now, Texas A&M will have free throws coming up after the timeout. All right, so 7 all right now. Oh, my uh, camera just froze. Since we're in the timeout, it's a good place to stop here. Yeah, my last stream, my camera froze. So I'm going to uh, stop it. I'm going to unplug, and then I'll be right back. Um, so if you see the stream buffer, that means that I'm just trying to disconnect the equipment, and I'll be back within the next like minute or so. All right, so we're going to timeout right now. 7 all. 1546 left to play in the first. Yeah, I don't know why the camera keeps on buffering too uh, now at this time. I don't know. If you guys are new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams I cover on the channel. Yeah, it happened in the last stream too. I don't know why. Yesterday I had like a glitch in one of the games too where I had to like reset the scoreboard in. Um, six points so far making two threes by Emmanuel Sharp. That's not sustainable though. I'm going to have to get much more than that. Two for four shooting from three point range by Sharp. That's the only two buckets that Houston has recorded so far. And then basically spread out for A&M. Two points between three players. Manny Obaseki, Tyrese Radford. And also Solomon Washington, all with two. One point by Levesque. Hey, what's good? Uh, Antalio in the street. Welcome in. Grand Canyon's hanging in right now. 52-48 to 48 with eight minutes left to go. Alabama's in some deep foul trouble right now in that game. Start to the second half. UConn is shredding Northwestern 46-22. to 22. And this game is just getting started. So 15.49 left to go in the first. No, none of the top seeds have lost. The ones or the twos in this bracket. Houston making sure that it stays the same as Jim Nance is in the crowd. I wish that he was calling the March Madness game still, but University of Houston alum back in the class in 1984 in attendance there. He got his own banner at the Fertitta Center as well for Jim Nance. Isn't that something special? The voice of the Houston Cougars from 1991 to 2023 for March Madness. You the man right there for Jim Nance. In attendance, free throws to the line for A&M. First one, no good. 
Uh, yes, I hope to do Sweet 16 later this week. Uh, not sure what the games will be because the schedule hasn't been released just yet, but I'll let you guys know once it comes out. Yeah, I have to go into work tomorrow and figure out my work schedule because I get a feeling I'm going to have to be training a new person for this week. So I'm gonna probably going to have to be staying overtime to train someone this week because he's supposed to be switching on-air talent uh, the following week for them. And I'm the only one that knows how to run that soundboard, so I'm going to have to train somebody probably. Back to action. Both of the free throws were missed by a and Bounce pass of the quarter. That did not go out of bounds by Houston. Houston with it. Sharp floats up the runner. No good off the glass. Tipped up in the air. Offensive rebound. Cryer. That's a three from the outside and that's missed around the rim and out. That was Shed actually. Number one. a and with the basketball. Both of these teams struggling to buy buckets so far in this game. The first five plus minutes of action. Obaseki drives down the teeth of the defense. Gets fouled. A lot of follows here already. This would be... Uh, this should be on the floor. Picked up by Sharp. 15.08 left to go. This will be an inbound coming up here. Jumper, mid-range, swoosh for Texas A&M. They have the 9-7 lead. Yeah, we have like an 18-channel soundboard that we have that I work with. So I'm usually the one that's in charge of doing a lot of like the audio production stuff there for my uh, full-time job. Cryer has the ball in his hands now. LJ at the right wing perimeter. Crossover goes to the corner. Cryer, skip pass, left corner. Shed keeps it in play. Off the Sharp. Sharp moves it outside. Cryer spots up, takes the three. Off the back room, no good. They're struggling right now to find their shots. 9-7, Texas A&M with a possession. Obaseki driving down the hill to the rim. Jump off underneath, no good. Tough defense by Houston. We're going to tie up here to the floor. Possession arrow goes to the Cougars. They're just going to muddy this up as much as possible in this game right now. 14-22 left to go in the first. Texas A&M so far is taking this as a win that they are leading in this game, providing defensive stops. Houston's going to get something at the rim. They just keep on jacking up perimeter shots for them so far. you got to go to the rim and get some threes or uh, get some twos. They're going with all threes. They're two for seven from three. They're just 0 for one from two. Here's another three off the front rim. They miss it. Rebound secured here by Radford. They're just doing this like a three-point shooting contest currently in breaking shots. They're not really a perimeter-oriented shooting team. Texas A&M isn't tipped up. Battle for the basketball. Houston comes out with it on a run out. Two on one on the fast break up the floor. Got rejected. Got it back though. They score. Up and it off the backboard for two by Cryer. That's a teamwork possession right there by Houston. They had a long rebound run out and they just capitalized for two. Texas A&M blocked the first one off the glass, but they were able to get it back and follow it up for two. Top of the key with Obaseki. Obaseki's looking for somebody to come to him and finally able to put the ball into the hands to Anderson Garcia. Skip pass, left quarter, baseline dribble, bouncing bodies, and we got another Houston foul. So that's number five now picked up by the Cougars. Early, early follows right now in this game currently. If you guys are new in the stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Texas A&M gets the inbounds. Radford drives through the teeth of the defense. He scores. Tough one off the glass. Good for two. He was quadruple teamed inside the key, too. Everybody knows that Radford's going to drive right at the teeth of the defense. Four zip points in the paint in favor of A&M. Houston with a possession. Shed. Bounce pass goes over to the elbow to Roberts. Roberts turns the corner. Floats the runner. Open up the bank right there. Gets the drop. Good for the bucket. 11-11, that's the first bucket down low there inside the low post. Goes to Houston for Jawan Roberts. Under 13 minutes left to go. First half, Texas A&M with a possession. Top of the key here with Radford. Tyrese Radford drives again, straight line. Radford, tough shot, no good off the back rim. Pinwheels around. Houston collects the defensive rebound. That's number 11, Damarian Dunn, who came up with a defensive board. Here goes Shad, attack mode to the rim. And he's got it for the layup. Here comes Houston, first lead of the game, 13-11. to Jamal Shedd right there with a blow by speed. 12 and a half left to go in the first, A&M with a possession. Bounce pass goes to the right wing perimeter, into the hands to Anderson Garcia. Garcia 
Looking to hand it off, puts it into the hands to Wade Taylor to Fort. Taylor drives, floats at the rudder. That's a tough, tough shot off the top of the glass. And did Houston commit a foul here out of the pack? I think so. That's number six. They were signaling travel. They couldn't get it, though. UConn is destroying Northwestern, 51-27. Alabama's only up by three now against Grand Canyon, 55-52 with seven minutes left. This game's a good one right now, two-point game, and this will send A&M to the free to line, two shots. So it's on the shooting motion. Henry Coleman at the line shooting two. First one's good. If Houston can start to up this lead, then they're going to just slow down the tempo and just limit possessions. Whereas Texas a and trying to get as many shots off as possible on you. That's why they're number one in the nation of rebounds for them is because they try to just be aggressive and attack all game long. Both of the free throws are good. 13 all. Yeah, I predicted Grand Canyon to win that game over Alabama. Technical foul. If they do, there were two technical fouls in the first half. You can blame those for the loss for Bama. Zero tonight by Wade Taylor on zero for five shooting. He had 25 in the first round of the win over Nebraska. 13 even. Houston with a possession. They start off two for 10 shooting. They're three for three ever since. This is a tough, tough, physical, defensive-minded game. Top of the key here for the Cougars. Under 12 minutes left to go before halftime. Sharp spin key from three into the hands of Shed. Shed's got blow by speed. Can he do it here? Drive, kick out to the corner. Outside it goes to Sharp. Sharp bobbled it though. Five in the shot clock. Sharp kick out quarter. Up big shed. Shed outside back to the top. Here's a three. Malik Wilson. No good. Rebound secured by A&M. Chase Carter the one who picked up the rebound. A&M entry pass down low. Underneath they pass it out to the wing. Obaseki will try a three. Oh he hits it. A&M buries a three by Mandy Obaseki. 16 to 13 now. A&M with a three point lead. Usually don't make many threes during the course of a game. They'll make probably two or three for them. That's major right there right now. Houston with a possession at the right wing perimeter. Shed, Shed, dribble, drive, attack with a right hand. He scores with a tear. Drop by Jamal Shed. One point game now. Shed looking to take over. He just looks like the fastest guy on the floor. I mean, Radford's trying to do the same, but you know what's coming with Radford. Obaseki, turnaround jumper, mid-range. Off the front rim, no good. Tipped up, and a rebound secure by Rock for Sharp here for Houston. Up the floor goes Shed. Crossover, dump off down low. A nice pass. That's a goaltend. Houston with a bucket. They take the lead. 17-16. This will bring us to a media timeout right now. 10-44 remaining in the first. Jamal Shed. X-ray vision on the last pass. Able to dump it off down low over to his teammate, Jawan Roberts, who scored the last bucket. And he has got blow-by speed on the floor. Fresh legs, looking like the top player out there on the court. We take the timeout. Houston by 1, 17-16. If you're new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Ring the notification bell as well if you guys would like to notify, uh, be notified for future live streams. And yeah, I had predicted Grand Canyon to win the game against Alabama. Grand Canyon's top five in the nation in free throw attempts. Free throw makes as well. They're top 50 in free throw shooting percentage. Alabama's top 20 in the nation in a bad stat. Most personal falls per game. And uh, Grand Canyon just took the lead 58-55. So I, I have Grand Canyon as my giant killer in the Sweet 16. And if they can outstand Alabama for the next six minutes and um, keep their lead, they're going to win it. 58-55 Grand Canyon after being down by double digits at one point. Ty and Grant Foster is 26 points. Mark Sears has 23 points, 11 rebounds for Alabama. I'm just going to go over to the box score of that one and see uh, what Alabama's been having issues with. You can look back at that game and see technical fouls and stuff. That's an athletic Grand Canyon team. Ty and Grant Foster is playing with a chip on his shoulder too. He's a transfer from Kansas. And uh, what, what a tournament he has had playing with a chip on his shoulder. That dude is all heart. 25 personal follows by Alabama. Yeah, they have they have Grant Nelson who's got four follows. Ryl, Rylan Griffin's got four. Yeah, Alabama looks like they're done. Alabama's got 25 personal follows. Grand Cannon is 15. See, whenever I do my bracket predictions, I always provide analysis to all my picks and reasoning. And that was a big part of my reasoning why I had Grand Canyon going to the Sweet 16. Follow issues for Alabama. And it, it's a bad matchup for them when Grand Canyon drives and drives and drives and attacks on you. 
Grand Canyon's got a victory over San Diego State, so they are no joke. That's a road win, too, at San Diego State. That team is no joke. They beat San Diego State on the road by six. Like, those, those are massive wins. Like, any time a mid-major has a win like that, a road win at a top five seed in the bracket, they're out for blood in the tournament. Uh, Major in the street, welcome in, taking Houston. Hit us up in the chat, by the way, who you guys like. And uh, this one here, Houston or A&M. If you're new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell. I cover play-by-play -play action here. College Chiefs and NBA on these live streams. Yeah, Alabama was up by like 30, 30, 35 against Charleston. Charleston at the end managed to score 93. I mean, Char Charleston, they did lose by, I forgot what it was. They lost by a score in the teens to... Alabama, but it was like one oh it was like one oh six to ninety three or one oh six to ninety two. Char Charleston made up a thirty point deficit into a gap that they lost in like a teenage number for them. So they made they made it much, much close because of the fouls towards the last five minutes of the game for Alabama. I mean Alabama was up like one hundred and seventy five and then Charleston managed to score in the nineties still. So seventeen sixteen right now. Yeah, I thought that was the case with Auburn, too, that uh, they were too deep for Yale, but that was not the case right there. 17-16 right now, 10-40 left to go in the first tier. A&M has the possession. Jace Carter sends it outside to Radford. Radford, dribble drive, attack, downhill, dump off underneath for A&M. Good bucket coming out of the timeout there for the Aggies. Anderson Garcia gets it for two. We'll see what Houston responds with. By the way, UConn smashing Northwestern 55-27. Right now with 14 minutes left to go. Cougars have the ball. Slowing down tempo. Shed has it at the right wing perimeter. He's working on Jace Carter 101. Shed at the right corner. Right baseline dribble. Skip pass. Left wing. Touch pass. Left corner. Open three. Houston. They got it. That's great ball movement for the Cougars. 20-18 to 18 now for Houston. A&M, can they make those threes? They've only made one. They're bottom 10 in the nation in three-point shooting. Houston, tough defenses. It went off the front room. They came up with a rebound. Here goes Shad up the floor. Shad towards his left. Bumped into and followed. A&M picks up a personal foul charge to Mandy Obaseki reaching in. That's Malik Wilson off the bench. A Texas Tech transfer who just drilled the last three for Houston. That's the best ball movement we've seen all game long. Alabama just took the lead back. 59-58 with 5.20 left to play. Shed gets the inbound here. 9.40 left to go before halftime. Shed moves it outside to Malik Wilson. Wilson into the hands of the left wing perimeter to Sharp. Sharp outside goes to Shed. Shed at the March Madness logo. Shed, top of the key, working on Solomon Washington. Skip pass, right corner, baseline dribble, floating up the runner. Contact in the foul. LJ Cryer going to shoot two at the free throw line. So Houston starting to see if they can pull away. Big East perfect in the bracket, 5-0. and Clemson never trailed in the win over Baylor. ACC having an excellent time in the bracket. Duke pounding James Madison today by 38 points. That's some of the tournament... Games that's gone down today. Alabama's up by two over Grand Canyon now, 60 to 58. First free throw is good here by LJ Cryer. Houston's going to see if they can build this lead and force Texas A&M into tough shots so they can come up with defensive rebounds. 22 18 now. We'll see how Texas A&M responds. This is the first time they've been down by two possessions. Tonight, nine to two run by Houston in the last minute and fifty. We'll see how Texas a and is able to respond right now. They're not an efficient team, trailing by four in this game. Can they mount a comeback here? Handoff, top of the key, Jace Carter. Carter swings it outside over to Radford, looking for a quality possession for a and He drives, blocked, got it back. Watch out, he was close to the baseline, but able to get it outside. Shot clock's down to five, got a launch. They launch from the logo, it's no good off the front rim. And a rebound secured by Houston with it over the back call, picked up by a and &M. That's just an incredible defensive stand there by Houston. A block in the baseline. They moved it all the way back to the logo. And they forced Texas A&M to take a three from the logo. This is a team that should not be shooting threes from the logo if you're A&M. They don't make many threes per game this season. And plus, they just 
committed the over the back foul. So that's the third by A and M. Or no, that's on Houston. Wow, that's on Houston. So Tyrese Radford's coming to the free throw line. Kelvin Sampson cannot, cannot believe that call. Wow, Houston came up with a rebound and A and M missed the free throw. So they missed the bonus free throw. Houston comes out with a defensive rebound. 22-18. Under nine minutes left to go before halftime. Houston looking to build upon the lead right now. Shed has that the right wing perimeter. He's defended by Radford 101, slowing down tempo. 12 on the shot clock for Shed. Shed crossover. Taking it himself. Takes the three. No good. Bricked off the back of offensive rebound. They're gonna go and run with a jumper. Baseline crier. He connects with it. 24-18. They're just so good at offensive rebounds. Tonight, they're minus three in the glass, actually, seven to four. That's because Texas A&M leads the nation in offensive rebounds. Houston's right behind them at number 10. Top of the free throw circle, Anderson Garcia moves it off to the corner to A&M. Spin move inside the low block now with Washington. Washington pass underneath. They're making it difficult to here for Houston's defense behind a back pass. Oh, they get the layup. That's an amazing pass there by Solomon Washington. Jace Carter scores the layup, cutting to the hoop. 24-20, major possession there by AM. Houston with the ball. Both of these teams, eight points in the paint each. Right wing perimeter. Shed dribbles up, up big. Shed. Shed moves it outside. Out to the left wing perimeter. Catch and fire three. Houston right down the shoot. They got another one. Emmanuel Sharp finding a stroke tonight for the Cougars. Third of a triple by Sharp. That's what you need to win a national championship for Houston. If you have perimeter shooting like that, you get the defense for sure. They pick up their eighth personal foul, though. As A&M will head back to the free throw line here. Dudes are crashing the glass left and right in this game. We see the behind the arc, behind the back pass. That was amazing by A&M. We get some good plays. Anderson Garcia off to Carter and then Emmanuel Sharp. Three main three so far for him. It takes us to the media break. 7.32 left to go in the first. Houston up by 7, 27 to 20. If you guys are new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams I cover. And uh, what a game. What a game here, folks. UConn is shredding Northwestern, 57-32. Alabama's up by one with four minutes left over Grand Canyon, 62-61. Um, is UNC versus Alabama winner? Uh, let's see, North Carolina. Yep, that's against the winner, Alabama Grand Canyon. And then UConn, UConn will take on... The winner of Yale versus San Diego State, UConn will take. The winner of this Houston-Texas A&M matchup will take on Duke in the Sweet 16. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refresh this. So this is what we got so far for Sweet 16 matchups. North Carolina, which is awaiting the winner of this Grand Canyon-Alabama game. Iowa State will take on Illinois. Arizona will take on Clemson, and then those are the Thursday matchups. There's another one to be determined, which Dallas, Texas. I don't know which one this would be the grouping of, either Thursday or Friday. Okay, and then Gonzaga will take on Purdue. NC State will take on Marquette. Creighton will take on Tennessee, and then there's another grouping, so they all depending. On the groupings and stuff like that. What a game between Gonzaga and Grand Canyon. What a game there for that matchup. Just going to check over the score of that game. We got 62-61. Alabama leads by one over Grand Canyon with 348 left to play. They headed to immediate timeout. Mark Sears has 24 points. Tyan Grant Foster has 29 yeah, Duke with a major win today. They shredded James Madison. So whoever wins this one will take on Duke in the Sweet 16. Yeah, so Arizona's out west. So they're in the region with North Carolina. UConn is in the region with... Yale, San Diego State, Illinois, Iowa State. That's who's remaining in that region. Twenty-eight 
27 to 20 right now. And there was an injury for Houston. I think that's 11. Demarion Dunn. Or no, 13. 13. Jawan Roberts. That's Ma Jawan Roberts headed over towards the bench. He's such a good rebounder too. That's something to keep an eye on. Texas A&M at the free throw line just missed the first free throw. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I've never been to Bermuda before. Yeah, probably UConn against San Diego State. Yale, though, might be a battle between the two Connecticut schools. And we got bodies tangled up here underneath off the rebound that's charged to Texas A&M. Bodies flying everywhere in this game right now. And that's A&M's fourth. Houston has eight for personal fouls. Houston's foul trouble. There's two each by Francis and Roberts so far. They've gone three guys deep so far in this game for Houston. And then A&M has one personal foul between four players each. Washington, Wade Taylor, the fourth, Obaseki, and Radford. And Houston up in the corner as they could not convert on it. Goes back to Texas A&M now. Third, second block of the game by A&M. And they take it a distance with Radford. That's a big layup right there. The block and the layup on the opposite side. Five-point game. Seven minutes left to go before halftime. LJ Cryer brings it up the floor. Top of the key here. Cryer outside into the hands of the shed. Cryer at the wing. Seven minutes left to go before half. Cryer dribbles up inside the key. Bounce pass. They got intercepted. He's out to the races here. Here goes Radford. Attack mode with a double clutch. He scores up in and off the glass. Wow. That's big time there for Tyrese Radford. Rarely does Houston turn over the basketball, plus it results in a steal on the layup like that. 10 out of the 24 coming through Radford so far. Houston with it. Shed turns the corner off big. Shed outside here. Sharp releases up a three. No good. Skipped around the rim and now A&M collects the defensive rebounds. And they'll slow it down here. Taylor at the March Madness logo for A&M. They're only down by three right now. They're just one for six from three though. At the wing it goes to Radford. Radford dribbles back out to the March Madness logo. Radford, top of the key off the screen, set by Solomon Washington. Radford, down to 10 on the shot clock here for AM. Radford working one on one crossover. Backs his way inside, his pass deflected, intercepted by Houston. Here goes Houston with it up the floor. Cryer into the hands of Shed, passes to his teammate underneath. Swing pass outside, Sharp, open three, splash. He's got another one. Emmanuel Sharp, the flamethrower in the first half here for Houston. Fourth made three. He is four for seven from the perimeter with 12 points. They're taking whatever the defense gives to them in this game. And Texas a and is getting guys back in the paint. They're leaving the perimeter wide open. And A&M will burn a timeout now. 5.34 left to go. Six-point lead for Houston as Texas A&M will talk things over. Emmanuel Sharp, massive. From the outside in this game currently. That's a huge development for Houston here. Because it's been more of an offensive game than a defensive game. Which has played more into the taste of A&M. But getting a guy that's been able to be sizzling from three. That's huge for Houston right now. This is a Houston team that is shooting around 35% from three. They're not bad from the perimeter. Not like great either. But Emmanuel Sharp, 36% shooter. His shots are dropping tonight. It's usually LJ Cryer that's been the hot hand shooting 39% from the perimeter. Cryer yet to make a 3-0 for three. Making up for the work here for Cryer. Alabama up by 5, 66-61 with a minute 58 left to go. Yeah, Grand Canyon was up a little while ago, but uh, the wheels start to fall off here. Going to have to get something immediately if they want to make that a game. It's all UConn. Uh, UConn leading Northwestern 66-42 with eight minutes left. Yeah, this has basically been all chalk in the bracket for the most part here. If you guys are new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell as well if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams I cover on the channel. 
five and a half left to go before halftime. Minute and a half in that Alabama Grand Canyon game. Alabama with a bucket with a win against Grand Canyon, and they do. They dunk it home 68 61. Alabama shuts down the door against Grand Canyon. Yep, they turn it over. That's it for Grand Canyon, it looks like. Alabama on a 13-3 scoring run. They've done that so much this year that they've been down by, like, double digits. They come back and win for Alabama. They play their best basketball in, like, the final five remaining. That was a tough drive there for A&M that they scored a layup. Emmanuel Sharp's having a, a game out here. They gave up an open two, and they kicked it out to the wing for a three. They had a guy closing out, though, for the two. Five thirty-four left to go. A&M, as they will get the inbound here. 15 on the shot clock for A&M. Wade Taylor. Torres is right. Hands it off to Obaseki around the perimeter. Obaseki down the five in the shot clock. Spin move at the free throw circle. Obaseki going to have to take a tough shot. Contested. No good off the back rim. Offensive rebound controlled by A&M by Garcia. Outside it goes to Hayden Hafner. Number two. Dump off. Underneath and they got the bucket. Plus one. That's a big change in the game there. Anderson Garcia got the layup and he'll head to the free throw line. Wow, a couple uh, developments right here. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, I think that's a good pickup right there if they're able to get Will Wade for uh, Louisville there, Bradley. One free throw at the line, that is good. Three-point game, A&M's hanging in right now. 30-27. to 27. Houston with a possession. Sharps made four threes. Rest of the team one for seven. They got to get Cryer going in this game. Shad, skip pass right corner into the hands to Wilson. And AM picks up their fifth foul, reaching in. That's number five by AM. Next time around, AM is going to be in the double bonus since Houston's got nine in this first half. Cryer outside, Shed back out to Cryer. Quarter three, Cryer no good. Skidded off the rim, rebound controlled here for the Aggies. Pass midcourt with Wade Taylor. Taylor at the top, Taylor towards his right around the perimeter. Dribbles up now, stumbled, Taylor shoveled it, and he got stripped going up. Another foul. Now it's going to be two shots the rest of the way this half. So Texas a and will head to the free throw line. They're just putting Houston into foul trouble right now. Yeah, this is not a matchup that Houston wants because they did have a couple of key guys injured this season. A&M's just trying to bait them into as many falls as possible. Oof. Yikes, that's tough for Alabama there. Mark Sears just cramped up. Well, they're down to 20 seconds. Alabama's going to win over Grand Canyon. First free throw missed. I mean, these falls haven't helped out A&M's cause, though. 50% at the free throw line, 6 for 12. Second free throw. They got that one. Rattled in. Two-point game. Alabama wins over Grand Canyon 72-61. And UConn's around seven minutes left from winning over Northwestern 66-45. UConn. Crossing midcourt with Jamal Shedd. Shedd at the right wing. Perot their dribbles towards his left. Looking to space out the floor right now for Houston. Demary Dunn's on the floor. They move it out left corner. Cryer with a three. Missed off the rim again. And it's going to be a Houston foul over the back once again. Yikes. Too many fouls right now. Houston's going with just an eight-man rotation. Two personal fouls each between Francis Robert Sharp. One by Cryer. One by um, off the bench with Cedric Lath.
The falls are piling up right now for Houston. Four fifteen left. I mean, based on the rate of this game, this game's gonna take take forever if they keep on stopping the clock right now. A and M will have free throws here. Anderson Garcia shooting two shots at the free throw line. Double bonus for A and M. A&M's only 50% at the line. They're 7 for 14 right now. First free throw. It's good. 30 to 20. 29. Second shot here for the tie. That's good. 30 to 30. Francis with three, so that updates. He's got three. Roberts has two. Sharp has two right now. Cryer moves it out to the top. It's Malik Wilson. Bounce pass. Left baseline. Jumper fall away. Got it to go. Demarion Dunn makes the J. That's a deep two jumper. Leading forward as well for Dunn. Nine lead changes. Six ties in this matchup. A and M to the bucket. They get the layup. Manny Obaseki scores the two. Back and forth, back and forth. Final 3.45 left to go before halftime. Houston has the possession. LJ Cryer at the left wing per over there. Cryer now dribbles up and drives the elbow. Back outside, moves it off the shed. Shed 15 on the shot clock. Out to Dunn. Dunn laces up a three. Came off the rim short. Tipped it out to his teammate Shed. Baseline dribble Cryer. Dump off at the free throw circle here for Houston. Kick out quarter. Here's a three on its way. No good off the back rim. Tipped out and tipped to the wrong player. Here comes Wade Taylor with the basketball. Texas A&M, chance to take the lead with a two, and they get fouled again. Anderson Garcia, two more shots coming up at the line. This is just getting insane with all these fouls right now. That's going to be charged a shed on the shot. It's more of the front court guys that's been in deep foul trouble. Shed picks up his first. We'll take the media timeout as well. 3.15 left to play here. The first half of action, 32 even. These fouls are currently just piling up on Houston right now. Yeah, Colorado gave a good fight today against Marquette. Two by Roberts, two by Sharp. I believe it's Javier Francis who's got three. The The stat graphic for CBS had three. It's only got two on his box on ESPN, though, for some reason. Shed's got one. Cryer's got one for a foul. And then off the bench, Cedric Lath has a foul. A&M is just Solomon Washington who's picked up two. That's the only one who's been... Having foul difficulties in this game. UConn looking good. Moving on to the next round. 66-45 for UConn over Northwestern. Donovan Klingon double-double. 14 points, 14 rebounds. Yeah, Purdue and Illinois. So those are the two remaining right now. More of the question is how about the Big 12? Just Iowa State currently out of the Big 12. A lot of people said that the Big 12 was the best conference this season in all of college basketball, but the the back half of the top 25 Big 12, that, that looked relatively weak with those groupings of teams. BYU, Texas Tech, TCU, Kansas. I mean, that, that those teams in that grouping, Texas, all those teams, mm, it's just like 
they kind of floated to the back. And they were like super overrated comparing on their rank. Probably shouldn't have been ranked that high in the back of the top 25. Like it looked like there were like big divisions in the Big 12. Like Houston and Iowa State at the top. And then a big split between those two and then Baylor. And then another big split between the other teams in the, in the Big 12. Like Kansas, Texas Tech, BYU, TCU. Those teams just did not show up for their games. And did not play well this tournament. Uh, RZ in the stream, welcome in. I, I probably take that Virginia squad. I think that Virginia squad was like the top team in offensive efficiency too from 2019. And they were the top defensive team. They were like one of the top offensive efficient team wise too. Yeah, usually these Texas teams make it super far in the bracket. This is it. So this is it. Only one team out of Texas will uh, be playing in Texas during the Sweet 16 next week. Wow, Bucks with a big win over OKC. Free throws here at the line, and A&M just cannot make these free throws. First one was missed. So went off the rim short by Anderson Garcia. If A&M's making these free throws, they will be leading now by the score 40-32. to They've missed eight free throws. Second one's good. A&M now takes the lead, 33-32. Houston with a possession, 9-2 run by A&M in the last two minutes. The Cougars looking for something. Shed at the top, swings it outside to Cryer. Cryer having a tough game so far today. Cryer at the left wing. Cryer dumps off to Shed. Shed top of the key. Back outside, Cryer up fake. Cryer outside, Shed. Shed drives inside with a runner. Kiss off the glass, scores. 34-33, Houston. That's a great, great drive right there by Jamal Shedd. Six points now by Shedd. The leading score is Emmanuel Sharp. He's got 12. Floater down low, and it's going to be another foul here for Houston. So a and will head back to the free throw line. It, it, it's just mind-boggling that a and gets the free throw line this much, and they, they're, they're one of the top teams in the nation in free throws, but... They can't make these free throws. It's just mind-boggling to see. I mean, you're not going to be able to win games if you can't make these free throws. That one's off. No good on the first one. I mean, certainly these fouls are not helping out Houston, but Texas A&M can't even make free throws. So it's like you're hacking Ben Simmons every single time to head to the free throw line in this game. Second shot coming up by Manny Obaseki. And he missed them both. So Obaseki now is 0 for 3 at the free throw line in this game as Houston came up with a board. Four players have two plus follows. Shed to the rim. He gets it. A drop and one. Coming up at the free throw line by Jamal Shed. This is where they have a chance to start to take over. Shed just has dribble drive speed. Blows right past Manny Obaseki to the cup. That's now personal follow number six. Picked up as a team for AM. So one shot here by Shed at the free to line. It just seems like he's like a step faster than everybody else on the floor tonight. The free to by Shed, it's up and it's through. Got, got the bounce. And Houston's making their free throws. And Texas A&M, big difficult part of this match is that they haven't been able to do so. 2.20 left to play right now. A&M down by four. At the left wing, it is Tyrese Radford. Radford, 12 on the shot clock, lobs it inside the paint here. Follow a shot, that's tough, and he got it. Swoosh by Henry Coleman. Two-point game currently, approaching two minutes left to go before halftime. Shed crosses the midcourt logo. Three follows by Francis, two each between Cryer, Roberts, and Sharp. Shed, crossover, off fake. Shed leans forward. Shed, oh, he's taken over. Jamal Shed with another two inside the key. 39-35. Shed now getting himself up to double figures with 11. Texas A&M started off 7 for 24. They're 5 for 6 ever since though. Obaseki. Holy smokes. Driving downhill to the rim. Found a gap in the defense. And threw it down with a left-handed hammer. Two-point game right now. Hagen on the stream. Welcome in. What a battle. Final minute and a half left to go before halftime. Houston with possession. Obaseki's got 9 for A&M. Shed. 
has that the March Madness logo circles around Shed. Dribble drive inside. Kick out to the corner. They push it over to Sharp. Sharp weaves his way. Jumper. Mid-range. Got it. A drop. It's good for two inside the key. Emmanuel Sharp tonight finding its stroke. 41-37. Final minute left to go before halftime. And a Shed gets called in the reach and foul. He was trying to force the tie, but the referees called a reach by Shed. And this is going to send A&M to the free throw line again. Bryce, welcome in. Thanks for joining in. Hit us up on the chat. Who guys like to win this one here? Houston or A&M? Type it in. Two free throws and a double bonus by Wade Taylor. He is scoreless for the top score this season. Averaging 19 per game. He's got nothing and he missed the first free throw. A&M right now is shooting stones at the free throw line. They're 10 for 21 on free throws right now in this first half. Second shot here at the line by Wade Taylor, and it's good. 41-38, final minute left to go before halftime. Houston crosses midcourt here with Shed. Shed has it at the left wing. He's defended by Carter. Final 50 seconds left to go before half. Shed dribbles towards the March Madness logo for Houston. 10 on the shot clock. Shed top of the key working on Carter. Shed dribbles up and drives inside the key. Swings it out to the right wing. Sharp sized up to his left. Takes the three. Came up short. No good. Offensive rebound back to Shed though. Dribbles out to the quarter. 18 in the shot clock. 30 in the game clock for Shed. He'll slow it down here for Houston. Shed dribbles. Drives inside to the cup and he gets fouled. This will be free throws coming up down to 25.6 seconds. This is going to be a one-and-one. One. Referees say it was before the shooting motion. So Shed will head to the free-throw line shoot in the one-and-one. One. Shed with 11 right now. 5 for 10 from the floor. 25.6 seconds left to go before halftime. One-and-one one bonus by Shed. First one's up. First one is good. Four-point lead here for Houston. David on the stream, welcome in. Thanks for joining in. Jen, welcome back in. Free turn number two coming up for Shed. It's up and it's through. Got them to drop down. Houston's making their free throws. A&M is not right now in this game. 25.6 seconds left to go. Shot clock turned off right before halftime. A&M's missed 11 free throws. 11 for 22. Houston is 6 for 7. At the free to line. Top of the key for Texas A&M. Radford has it with 10 seconds left to go before half. Bounce pass goes to Obaseki. 8 seconds. Obaseki dribbles up. Drives inside. Spin move. Tough shot. No good off the front rim. Tipped up. Houston comes up with a rebound. Three-fourths court shot here at the buzzer. No good. As we close out going to halftime. Houston leads by 5. 43 to 38 right now. Wade Taylor limited to just one point against the top defense in the nation. And fewest points allowed being the Houston Cougars. Taylor's averaging 19 per game this season for A&M. And they put Houston into some deep, deep foul trouble in the first half. But still, Houston has been able to find a way, somehow, some way. And uh, it's been a gift by the other team from Texas A&M in this matchup, given 11 missed free throws off the board. To help out Houston's cause in this matchup here as we head off to halftime. And a five-point lead for Houston. If you're new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams as well. On the channel, Patrick, welcome back in. Thanks for stopping by from Jamaica, man. UConn's going to be going on to the next round as they're beating Northwestern in the final minute, 72-56. to Yale versus San Diego State will tip off in around 20 minutes or so. We're going to half here, five-point advantage for Houston. Houston led as many by 7, 27-20 at one point in the game. 
Houston racked up a bunch of fouls. 14 in the first half for Houston. 14 personal fouls. Lucky that they spread them out as a team. Uh, down, down the line for starters, though, kind of getting heavy for fouls here. Three personal fouls by Javier Francis. Two each between Robert Sharp, Cryer, and Shedd. And then one each off the bench by Lat, Wilson, and Dunn. They played eight guys so far tonight for Houston. So, yeah, they're in quite a bit of foul trouble in this one for Houston. Though A&M cannot make free throws. 11 for 22 at the free throw line. Tyrese Radford is 0 for 3. Manny Obaseki is 0 for 2. Wade Taylor is 1 for 2. Wade Taylor has only got 1 point. He's 0 for 6 shooting. And, um... Wildens Levex one for two. Solomon Washington's two for four. The only one that's been reliable is Anderson Garcia. He's four for five. And also Henry Coleman off the bench is three for four on free throws. Um, I took Houston in this one for my prediction. So A&M's hanging right in right now. We got a really good game at half. A&M's trying to put Houston into as much foul trouble as possible in this one here. It's just like they, they go to the free throw line so often for Texas A&M. You would think that with a frequency that they get better every single game when it, when it's time to shoot their free throws. But this has not been the case tonight right now. They've, they've attempted 22 free throws. They've only made 11, only half of them. Basically, this whole uh, whole bracket for the second round has been chalk for the most part, basically. UConn's about to win. 17-point victory by UConn, 75-58, to the final score over Northwestern. UConn advancing over to the Sweet 16 for the Huskies. And they'll be playing games at the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts, as UConn will face the winner of Yale versus San Diego State in the Sweet 16. Illinois versus Iowa State will be playing out of that region as well. The three versus the two. So it will be the one, the three, the two. And then we're awaiting whether it will be the five or the 13 out of that region. Might be a battle between the two teams from Connecticut, UConn and Yale. That will be something right there. If Yale pulls off the upset in the nightcap tonight over San Diego State. This has been a tough, gritty, physical type of battle so far this game. Houston shooting 48% for the floor. AM shooting 41% right now. AM's plus four in the offensive rebounds, 10 to 6. Uh, Houston usually doesn't, doesn't play against another team that's better than them on the offensive glass, but Texas AM's number one in the nation. Houston is number 10 in offensive rebounds. Barely any turnovers. Two turnovers by Houston, one by AM. That, that's how Houston generates points, too, is steals. They're seventh in the nation in steals, and they just haven't been able to force those turnovers from A&M. A&M's top ten in the nation, the fewest turnovers per game. And this is a battle right now. A&M's trying to get Houston into as much foul trouble as possible in this game. For Houston, what, what's been huge is Emmanuel Sharp. That he's really stood out. He's had an excellent matchup. Sharp's got 12 points in the first half, making four threes. Got his game, uh, got his team right out of the gates, going, making his shots from the perimeter. 
if you're Houston, you're going to get LJ Cryer finding his stroke from three. Cryer, a 39% three-point shooter this season, has yet to make a three tonight. He's zero for five from the perimeter, so he's going to get going. Jamal Shedd's going to find his shot. He's zero for three. <laughs> and for Houston, you want to build up the lead against Texas A&M because Texas A&M, not really an efficient shooting team this season. If you can build up that lead, builds confidence there for Houston because they love to slow down the game and play their pace for the Cougars, whereas Texas A&M, they're going to try to put you in as much foul trouble as possible and uh, get to the free throw line as much on you. But if they're making their free throws, then they'd have this game right now. That's not been the case here. They've left 11 points off the board. They're just 1 for 6 from 3. That 3-point number is expected for them. They're bottom 10 in the nation in 3-point shooting percentage. And that's expected. Manny Obaseki. Made a lone three. And uh, going to have to make much more of those shots tonight if they want to have a chance plus free throws. Got to work, work on free throws. If anybody's interested, feel free to join the Second Chance Bracket Challenge group. If anybody's interested out there, I got that link pinned to the chat. All are welcome to do so. I'm hoping to be back next week for some of the Sweet 16 and Elite 8 games. I'll probably release the schedule out in the community tab sometime later this week once I know more of my schedule throughout the week. So probably my next stream will most likely be on Thursday with the uh, Sweet 16 Elite 8 games. Um, I'm going to take some time off because I have to work on my other stuff for this week. And I'll probably be back on Thursday. Yale versus San Diego State is going to tip off in about 10 minutes. That's the final game that takes place today. Winner of this game, Houston against Texas A&M, is going to take on Duke in the Sweet 16 out in Dallas. So the South region, which these teams are in, and whoever wins this game is going to be playing in their home state. You, uh, Duke shredded James Madison earlier today 93 to 55 I mean I was expecting a much better game out of James Madison but Jared McCain came out and he was firing he scored 30 points for Duke today making eight threes he was knocking down shots and James Madison just uh just man they really did not show up after they won against Wisconsin they really fell down flat for James Madison so basically, it's been Clemson and NC State, the two teams that were the underdogs from the ACC that picked up victories and are moving on to the Sweet 16. Yeah, Duke was hitting their perimeter shots today. They looked really, really good. Gonzaga, Duke, and then Purdue. Those are the three that they're just ripping threes left and right with those three teams. Gonzaga, Duke, and Purdue. That was a statement by Gonzaga, how they smashed Kansas. That's going to be a great game, Gonzaga and Purdue, because those teams were making threes left and right. Hey, I'll see you back for the Sweet 16, Alex. Enjoy the rest of your night, man.
Yeah, Duke's been really under the radar this year. They're a four seed. They'll be facing the winner of this game over in Dallas, Texas on Friday. Super under the radar for them this year. They just haven't been able to win against signature competition, so they got a chance to prove themselves in this tournament. They're 0-3 against either one or two seeds. They lost against Arizona in the second game of the season at Cameron Indoor. They get swept by UNC. Usually they're able to even it up against UNC and take out at least one. But uh, this year they lost both times against North Carolina. North Carolina really showed something. That win over Michigan State. They were down by 12. They came back and won that game just resilient. How they won that game for UNC. And then Creighton. Um, they showed something in the final minute against Oregon. Poor Oregon just inbounded it to the wrong dude. They had Enfali Dante who took the inbound. And he's not a good free throw shooter. And missed the free throw. But uh, Creighton was down by four points with a minute left to go. They came back. They forced overtime. They forced the second overtime. And then eventually they blew out Oregon in the second overtime. And won that game. That's a team that's got loads of experience. That was one point away from being in the Final Four last year. Yeah, I think Gonzaga has a chance there. I really think they got a chance. Gonzaga's heating up at the right right moment for them. They're they're hitting their threes. That's that was a struggle for them for most of the year was that they couldn't find their stroke from three and now they're finding it right now at the right time for Gonzaga. Yeah, both of those teams played each other this year. Um, UNC and UConn, I believe. Gee, I think North Carolina has a game coming up against out of that yeah out of that bracket that they're gonna face another opponent that they have played with before. Yep, UConn beat UNC 87-76 to on December 5th. That was the Big East ACC Challenge game. Oh, Alabama. They play against each other? No. Okay. So U uh, UNC is Alabama coming up. Somebody does, I feel like, in the bracket that they've played each other before. Sweet 16. Oh, it's Gonzaga-Purdue. That's the one. Yeah. Um, Gonzaga Purdue, they played on November 20th. 73-63 Purdue beat Gonzaga. We didn't even know if Gonzaga would have been in the tournament. That's the they they've flown under the radar this year because usually they're like a one or a two seed for Gonzaga. They they weren't even in the bracket until they beat Kentucky at Rupp back in early February. They were like borderline like a ten or an or an eleven seed that needed to win like signature games for them. So this was, okay, so yeah, I, I think Gonzaga's got a chance here to win this game. 73-63 out in the All-State Maui Inventational. Purdue beat Gonzaga by 10. This was on November 20th, so right before Thanksgiving out in Hawaii. Purdue won that game. Gonzaga shot the ball 18% from three. Purdue did not have a good three-point shooting game either at 23.5%. Gonzaga shot the ball 38% from the floor. Purdue shot the ball 47% from the floor. Yeah, I don't think Gonzaga is going to shoot 38% from the floor once again for them. The thing about Gonzaga is that they've had transfers on their team. Graham E.K. transferred over from Wyoming, so it's taken some time to gel. They lost that game at home. They lost the game against San Diego State because I remember I streamed that game. It was around Christmas time, and they, they, they really played terrible that game. And then after that, besides the Santa Clara loss, they've looked excellent after uh, the loss against Santa Clara. Graham E.K., He's a transfer from Wyoming. That was his third game that he played of the season. 
they made a adjustment to the starting five, which they're 16-2 and two with Ben Gregg inside the starting five for Gonzaga. Ben Gregg only played 19 minutes in that game against Purdue. He went one for five, scored just two points. So you know he's going to be a difference maker in this game against Purdue coming up in the Sweet 16. Uh, Ryan Nemhard, a transfer from Creighton. So they, so they had... They had significant transfers um, come into the program for Gonzaga, and that was only their third game of the season. Purdue, they had Lance, so Lance Jones came in as a transfer too from Southern Illinois. He's really changed that team there, having like a physical type of guard that's scrappy and can uh, steal the basketball. But they had more of their starting lineup ret retained for Purdue compared to Gonzaga, which was making more adjustments, trying to tweak it out and see what was right and what would work throughout the course of the season for Gonzaga. So I really think Gonzaga's got an opportunity right there coming up against Purdue. And Gonzaga, they that, that was their third game when they lost against Purdue. That was game three for them. Purdue, that was game four. So Gonzaga, that, they had played one fewer game than Purdue by that point of the season. And I'll, I'll even see what the opponents are too to see if there's a big like difference maker or not because I would like to see if... Uh, Purdue was prepared, playing some top caliber teams beforehand. Uh, they okay, so they were coming off a game against Xavier, so not like, not like any like cupcakes there. They had Sanford, they shredded Sanford, ninety eight to forty five, with Sanford t took Kansas in the first round down to the wire, beat Morehead State, another NCAA tournament team by thirty, which lost to Illinois in the first round, and then they beat Xavier, eighty three seventy one, which uh, went to the NIT this year. That was the schedule of the first three games before the Gonzaga matchup. Oh, Gonzaga had a really, really easy schedule for them. So these were the two opponents that they faced. They faced Yale, which is playing any minute from now against San Diego State. They beat Yale by 15 in the opener. And then they beat Eastern Oregon 123-57. to That's a non-Division one school. So yeah, uh, Gonzaga had played two games. One of them was against Yale. The other one was against a non-Division one program in Eastern Oregon before they lost against Purdue. Whereas Purdue was coming off a game against Xavier, Big East program. Yeah, I think there's an opportunity there actually for Gonzaga. Honestly, they've they've improved miles this year for them. Yeah, that's going to be a good one there. Iowa State with their defense going up against Illinois' offense. Oh man, that's going to be quite the game. Both of those teams are super physical. Question is, can Iowa State score enough? And um. Question is, can Illinois crack down the Iowa State defense? Because Illinois hasn't really seen those types of defenses before in the Big Ten. Big Ten conference play doesn't really prepare um, the top caliber offenses for games like this. That's going to be a good one. Two different styles going up against one another. Joe, welcome in. Thanks for stopping by, man. Five-point lead right now for Houston. If you guys are new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. We're just at halftime in this one. Closing in on almost setting the field for the Sweet 16. Here's what we know with the matchups. Alabama will take on North Carolina. Illinois will take on Iowa State. Clemson will take on Arizona. Actually, they set the time of these games, too. So here's the Thursday game. 7.09 p.m., Clemson taking on Arizona. 9.39 p.m., Alabama will take on North Carolina. And then Illinois will take on Iowa State at 10.09 p.m. And then the winner of San Diego State versus Yale will take on UConn at TBD. That's probably... Oh, uh, man, when, it, when would that be? Probably six. Yeah, probably the six or the seven o'clock hour. That's an earlier game. UConn will be the first game in Boston. Yeah, they're the first game in Boston. Uh, that's probably seven twenty-nine. I'm I'm guessing it will be seven twenty-nine for a tip-off there in the East Coast time. So they're starting to put together the schedule. Right now, I just found that over on ESPN.com. They're trying to update schedule. They don't have uh, the TV schedule yet for that. Yep, San Diego State versus UConn. That would be wild. Maybe uh, UConn versus Yale battle of two Connecticut schools if uh, 
They pull off a major upset today, but everything's been chalk, basically. Wow, Tucker DeReeves leaving Drake, heading to West Virginia, according to Joe. Wow, that's shocking. His dad's the head coach for Drake. I wonder if they have something in the works there uh, for West Virginia, maybe, for his, for his father. Wow. Because West Virginia was without Bob Huggins this season. Here we go. Start to the second half here, everybody. If you guys are new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Texas A&M with the basketball left to right on the floor. Step back three in the air. No good. That's not their shot. Wade Taylor, the fourth, decide to take the three. Oh, they float up a circus shot. They get it, though, off the offensive rebound. Tyrese Radford scores for two. 43-40 right now. A&M hanging in at the moment. First possession for Houston. Right to left on the floor for Houston. They get the white jerseys, red numbers, red letters with the cursive Cougars out in the front. A&M maroon uniforms, white numbers, white letters. Radford, by the way, records his fifth double-double this season. Jumper got the bounce. Good for two by Houston. 45-40. to 40. Cougars extend it here. Good, good J. Just a moment ago for the Cougars. Here goes a drive, missed off the mark, no good for Texas A&M, tipped up, it goes to Shed for the defensive rebound. That was LJ Cryer who made a jumper just a moment ago for Houston. Cryer's got to get going, he's got eight. As Houston drove attacked, it was stripped out of bounds, it will stay Cougars basketball. 19 minutes remaining. What a game here. Houston gets the inbound. The top of the key into the hands to Cryer. He's yet to get going with a made three. Shed has it at the left wing. Shed at 12 in the shot clock. Shed crossover towards his right. Kick out to the corner. Catch and fire three. Houston no good. Bricked off the back rim. Battle for the rebound. Houston couldn't convert on the rebound. As here goes A&M on the run out here. Obaseki. That's going to be an offensive foul. Running right over Shed. As Shed takes the charge. It will go back to the Cougars. That's a huge momentum builder right there for Houston. Great position to take the charge for Shad. Yup. Sets both of his feet. Manny Obaseki down the lane. Runs him over. And this is going to go back to Houston. That's a big, big play right there by Shad on the charge. Five-point game right now. Houston with a possession. Shed moves it out to the top. Dunn puts the ball back into the hands of Shed. 20 in the shot clock. Shed edge of the logo. Outside finds Cryer. Cryer at the left wing. Cryer dribbles up low block. Outside finds Shed. Elevates for the three. Shed off the rim. No good. Defensive rebound hauled in by Jace Carter for A&M. A&M has it down by five. Dribble, drive, down the lane. Radford, no good. Offensive rebound underneath. They went up. They got stripped with it. And that's going to be charged to Dunn on the personal foul. And this will be free throws coming up here for A&M. If you're A&M, you want to make these free throws because it's been terrible. How their free throw shooting has been today. 11 for 22 in the first half. Todd in the stream, welcome in. Thanks for stopping by. Absolute dog there with Jamal Shed on the floor. He is a winner. First free throw. No good. Missed it at the line for AM. Chase Carter. Off the front rim. What a horrific game. 11 missed free throws in the first half. That's the most by any team in the NCAA tournament game since 2016. Oh, he missed another one. 0 for 2 that trip at the free throw line. AM is 11 for 24 at the free throw line. Emmanuel Roberts just picked up his third personal foul. Shed has it at the right wing perimeter. Shed dribbles baseline, dribbles back out to the outside, handoff, step back three in the air, Cryer open, splash, LJ Cryer sizzles the triple, eight point lead for H-Town, 17-40 left to go, that's a big there for Houston, LJ Cryer did not make a single three in the first half, 49%, three point shooter just made one, and we got a offensive foul, picked up charge to A&M. Second offensive fall this half. Charge to the Aggies. Here comes Houston. San Diego State, by the way, leads Yale 7-0 in the first three minutes. Riley, welcome in. Thanks for joining in. Emmanuel Sharp got pushed down at the free throw circle. Big momentum builders here for Houston. Jim Nance in the crowd. He is loving it right now. 
Houston with an eight-point lead. They got the basketball. They're going to slow down this game as much as possible, especially when they build it up to a double-digit lead if they can get it. Bobble pass deflected off the top of the glass there, and A&M forces a turnover. That's only the third turnover the game committed by Houston today. They drive to the rim. Figure roll with a lay made by Wade Taylor to fourth. 48-42 right now. That's a big steal on the layup there. Jada, welcome in. Thanks for stopping by, man. Just above 17 minutes left. Houston with a possession. Crossover at the wing with Cryer. Cryer takes the three from the wing. Oh, he hits it. LJ Cryer, he's a flamethrower right now. Back-to-back -back threes by LJ. 51-42 Houston. 14 now on the board for Cryer. Second made three tonight. Texas A&M, the inability to make free throws and the inability to make a three is really going to haunt this team. Here's a three. Got it. Second made three of the game. Number zero, Jace Carter buries the triple for A&M. That's a massive shot there. Six-point game here. Houston with a possession. Cryer takes up the floor. Cryer at the left quarter. Cryer sends it on top into the hands of Sharp. Outside the right baseline. They'll float up the runner. They got it. Two more on the board. Emmanuel Sharp off the baseline dribble for Houston. Eight-point lead for the Cougars. Their offense starting to break down this A&M defense rather easily lately. A&M with a possession here. Right wing per over there. Follow away three. Tough one. They bury one. Wade Taylor knocks down a three. He was held at just one point in the first half. What a game. Back and forth, back and forth. Both of these teams making shots right now. Taylor's got six total now. Left baseline with Cryer. Cryer dribbles back out to the perimeter. Bounce pass. Sharp gets it away. Right quarter. Here's a three. Came up short. No good. Tipped up. Battle for the rebound. Back to Sharp at the quarter. Going to take it away out of bounds. You last touched it. It was out of bounds off of Taylor. It's going to stay Houston ball. And we will take the media timeouts. 15-40. Left to play here. Both of these teams coming out of the half making shots. Some big threes by Houston. Some big threes in response back for A&M. That's huge for A&M. They don't make too many threes per game this season. Bottom of 10 in the nation, but a couple of them just a moment ago. Five-point game. We take the timeout. What a battle here. Whoever wins this game will play in Dallas. So they know what it means playing in their home state, representing their home state in the tournaments. Both of these teams separated by just 100 miles. If you guys are new to the stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams on the channel. 14 points by Emmanuel Sharp, 14 by LJ Cryer, 13 by Jamal Shedd. A balance between the three backcourt guys right now for Houston. 12 by Tyrese Radford leading the way for Texas A&M. Houston's in some deep fall trouble. Three personal falls each between Javier Francis and Javon Roberts in the front court. Two each between the backcourt guys, a sharp crier and shed. And then one each from the bench of Lat, Wilson, and Dunn. But still, able to balance out those fouls instead of one guy or two guys or three guys in severe foul trouble for Houston. Three personal falls each between Solomon Washington and Manny Obiseki for Texas A&M. Um, I took Houston to win it all this year. For them, top defense in the nation, and uh, if they they're making their threes right now, if uh, they can get these guys going from the perimeter, Cryer struggled early on, but he's starting to find his stroke, and also that's a big development right there. When you got Emmanuel Sharp making threes early on in the game, he made four threes in the first like 12 minutes of this game. Yeah, I got Houston and UConn in the championship. Start to feel more confident, though, more about, like, the Big East because Big East is looking solid in the bracket. Just the ACC has looked unstoppable, though. And uh, whoever wins this game is going to take on Duke. And um, that is a little concerning because the ACC right now looks super unstoppable in this bracket, all the teams that they keep on advancing. Um, I'll check that out for you, Joe. I'll see what the Indiana State point spread is for you. So they got Cincinnati, 9 o'clock NIT. Um, they're starting to set the field here for these games. Okay, so now they got the times for these games now for the Sweet 16 matchups. Yeah, I think they got a chance. A&M's a really, really tough physical team. Like, 
this is like a tough matchup for Houston because they only have eight guys that they're going through the rotation, and A&M's going to try to put them into foul trouble as much as possible. Um, I don't see a spread over on ESPN bet right now, so it's probably going to come closer to the game, Joe, because today's Sunday. It will probably be out either tomorrow or Tuesday morning, so I don't see it on the spread that I'm looking at right now for uh, Indiana State against Cincinnati just yet. I mean, A&M right now is hanging in this game. Wade Taylor's up to six points here. That's huge for A&M that they're able to start making threes. Back from the timeout, Houston with a possession. Cryer sends it off the shed. Shed at the edge of the midcourt logo. Dribbles towards the right wing. Dribbles up, and that will be a reach and foul. Picked up, charge to A&M. Shed got knocked down on the hardwood. Able to get back up. Back up on his feet here for Shed. Now is number 11, Anderson Garcia. Garcia's been the best free throw shooter today for A&M in this game. Who sheds in the... He's holding, I think he was holding his right side of his body, but he's okay now. He's back up. Inbound here for Houston. Hand off back to Shed. Yeah, he's okay. Shed has it at the logo. Outside goes to Cryer. Cryer, eight and a shot clock. Cryer thought about a step back up. Fake, leans forward. Took the jumper, no good. Pinwheeled around. And the Aggies collect the defensive rebound. A&M hanging in right now, down by five. Top of the key here with it. Tyrese Radford, dribble drive, floats it up over the top, but couldn't convert on the pass. That's a turnover. Not many turnovers today in this game, and that's one of them. Texas A&M doesn't turn it over too often. Radford just missed the mark too tall for his backdoor cutter teammate who was going to throw down an alley-oop jam. Rare mistake there on a turnover by A&M. 15 minutes left. What a battle. Battle of Texas here to play in Texas in the Sweet 16 to take on Duke. Houston by five with the basketball. Shed crosses the midcourt logo. Shed has it at the top of the key. Towards his left, hands it off to Cryer. Cryer at the top outside, finds Shed. Shed moves it out to the corner. Back outside, Shed. 12 in the shot clock here for Houston. Crossover, shed, dribbles, drives, bounce pass, crier, jumper, got it a go off the baseline, Jay. It's a nice cut right there by LJ. 55-48, 14 and a half left to play. Texas a and with a possession. They're not driving that much in this Houston defense anymore. Wade Taylor at the right wing, guarded by Cryer, dribbles up now inside the key, floats at the rudder, no good off the back rim, tipped out of bounds, last touched out by Houston. It's going to stay a and basketball. 14-17 left to go. A&M will get the inbound underneath coming up. Seven-point lead for Houston. Inbound goes to Radford. Radford at the elbow. Radford drives inside the paint on Sharp. He got it blocked. Loose ball. And Radford came down with it once again. They're good at 50-50 balls. They're going to launch up a three. No good. Around the rim and out. Tipped up to the perimeter. Bodies colliding all over the place. No call. But the referee is driving. Downhill to the lane. No good. Missed the layup again for A&M. Out of control that possession. Wade Taylor off a dribble drive inside just couldn't get any sort of body control and went leaning towards the right side and he missed high off the glass. Houston will slow it down now. Seven point advantage. Houston looking to build forward. Top of the key. Shed it. Dribbles up to the mid block. Handoff down low. Jawad Roberts floats up the runner. Got it a go. Good for two for the Cougars. 57 48. Largest lead tonight up by nine for Houston. 13 and a half left to play and Texas A&M now will burn a timeout. They were attacking, attacking the defense the whole game and getting to the free throw line. And now they're starting to uh, operate around the perimeter. They're not a perimeter-oriented type of team in the first place for A&M. you got to keep on driving, attacking, getting to the rim if you're the Aggies. Right now we have a timeout. 13 and a half left to go. Houston by 9. If you're new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams on the channel. I cover basketball action, play-by-play, -play, college hoops, NBA here on the channel. And we entered today less than 11 subscribers away from 25,000 subscribers on this stream. So if you haven't already done so, make sure to subs sub uh, subscribe over to the channels. We're very close to 25K. Very, very close. 16 by LJ Cryer, 14 by Emmanuel Sharp, 13 by Jamal Shedd. Those three backcourt guys are carrying Houston 
right now in this matchup. And then over for Texas A&M, they get Tyrese Radford, who leads the way with 12. He's got a double-double, 12 rebounds. Wade Taylor limited to just 6 on 2 for 12 shooting right now. The number one defense in college basketball really keying in and forcing Wade Taylor to uh, take some tough shots and miss those shots. And whoever wins this game will take on Duke in the Sweet 16. So those games have started to become set. Arizona versus Clemson will be on Thursday at 7.09. The winner of San Diego State versus Yale will take on UConn at 7.39. Alabama versus North Carolina at 9.39. And then Iowa State versus Illinois at 10.09. And then Friday. Winner of this game will play at 9.39 p.m. Eastern Time, 8.39 p.m. Central on Friday. NC State versus Marquette, 7.09 on Friday. Purdue versus Gonzaga, 7.39 Friday. 9.39 with a winner of this game facing Duke. And then Tennessee versus Creighton at 10.09 on Friday. So that's the game schedule there. I'm probably going to lean towards doing a 739 and then a 939. And I'll probably join in progress to 939 most likely. Because I think they they usually tip those off a little bit later than usual. The 939. That's what I'm leaning towards most likely for me. Because that 10.09 tip-off time is really late. For me, I'm, I'm from Massachusetts. I'm from the East Coast, and I get up at 6 for uh, weekdays to work. 57.48. 10 in the second half by LJ Cryer exploding here for Houston. 13 and a half left. Houston finding their offensive firepower and clamping down defensively. Inbound for Texas A&M, and they missed the shot. Pinwheel around. Houston came down with it. Houston looking for their first double-digit lead of the game. Fourth turnover for Texas A&M just a moment ago. Shed it. Slows it down. When they control the pace, they have the 350 at slowest tempo offense in the nation for Houston. That's when they get up by double digits. They have a chance here. Inside, dump off, and the key got deflected. And Texas A&M with a great steal. That's a big momentum changer right there for A&M. They've been held scoreless for the past three-plus minutes. They're needing something right here. A&M crossover, dribble inside, downhill to the rim, bouncing off the back rim, goes in for two by Manny Obaseki. That's a tough bucket there. 57-50. 12.45 left to go. Shed once again slows it down. Puts the ball into the hands to Jawan Roberts. And the outside handoff sharp back outside to Shed. Shed moves it off to the left elbow. Roberts powers his way down low. Dump off underneath to his teammate here. Right-handed baby hook. Off the back rim. No good. Soared up with a two-handed put back flush by Jamal Shed. Flying in there. Holy smokes. That's a highlight reel putback jam. He went over two defenders in the process as well. Oh my goodness, Shed. Here goes A&M blocked by Houston. Houston comes up with the basketball. Houston will slow it down once again. Nine-point lead, 12 minutes left. Fifth block of the game for the Cougars. Cryer at the left wing. Bounce pass goes to the elbow. Into the hands to Roberts. Roberts passes off to the cutter. Shed. Kick out quarter. And that's out of bounds. Just a little bit too much in that pass there to sharp off his fingertips. That's only turnover number two this half for Houston. We're under 12 left to go. The Cougars lead by nine. 59 to 50. How about this? The missed hook shot inside by... Javier Francis, but Jamal Shad able to clean it up with a two-handed flush. Oh, my goodness. 59-50 Houston. This dude is the absolute winner. Jamal Shad hit a fall-away shot at the buzzer against Oklahoma in the regular season. This dude just threw one down off a putback over two defenders in the process. Just insane. This dude just knows how to win for Shed. 
Yeah, no problem, Andrew. Uh, take as much time off that you need. Appreciate it here for being a part on the streams whenever you have a chance, man. And if uh, you need to take off any time, um, feel free to do so there. Uh, me mental health is definitely like the the biggest key to uh, making sure that you're happy there. And um, I'm f I'm all for it, man. That's that's the that's the biggest thing is that making sure that every day like your mental health is really really good. Jamal Shedd's now got 15, 5 assists by Shedd. Cryer, 16, 14 by Sharp. Houston shooting 51% from the floor. That's massive. This is against a pretty solid Texas A&M defense. Texas A&M more defensive mind. And then their offense, late stretch of the season, pouring in the points. They came into the game with 80-plus points in the previous five, 90-plus in the previous three, including putting 98 on the board against Nebraska. Today, they're limited to 50 with 11.50 left here. This is this is good production by Houston that they've got just at 51%. A little bit of mixing and matching for them. Taking care of the basketball. And once they keep on building that lead, they're going to slow it down, slow it down. They play a slow pace. When they get up, stay up. That's the motto for the Cougars they want to play is get ahead, stay ahead, and they're not, not getting into any foul trouble issues. This game is slipping away from Texas A&M. How Texas A&M wants to play the game is drive, attack, put you into foul trouble, get to the free throw line. But the question is, can A&M make those free throws? That has not been the case tonight. 11 for 24, and they haven't headed to the free throw line in the last 7 plus minutes for A&M. So they're getting away from playing their game while Houston is playing their game, which is crashing the glass, offensive rebounds, flying in, defensive rebounds. Slowing down tempo, slowing down pace, and uh, getting high-quality looks and making those shots for Houston to start to pull away a little bit right now. 59-50. to 50. The guards for Houston have been excellent. That's where most of the production has come from, like 80% plus from the backcourt. Fifty nine fifty right now. Jim Nance in attendance. Legendary broadcaster for these March Madness games. Back to action. Texas A and M with a possession left to right on the floor. Houston, top of the nation in field goal percentage defense this season. A and M has a top of the key here with Radford. Radford dribbles back out to the March Madness logo. Now drives. Radford got it stripped. Loose ball. That's a hustle play. Houston comes up with a turnover forced. What a dive there by Emmanuel Sharp in the corner. That's a game changing, altering, winning type play by Sharp. Forcing the strip, diving in the corner, coming up with a loose ball. Shed baseline dribble. Shed dribbles back out to the corner. Shed. Around the corner perimeter here. Guarded 101. Gets past his man. Skip past the quarter out of bounds. Off the fingertips of Cryer once again. They had two possessions that they just missed the mark in the pass. That was a fastball there by Shed. These guys are absolute dogs. 59-50. Four turnovers by Houston this half. Five by Texas A&M. These two teams do not turn over the basketball often at all. A&M with five, they average nine per game this season. Drive off the spin move of Seki. Oh, he turned it over for another time, and Houston came up with a steal on the key. Houston top ten in steals per game. Here we go. Houston with a possession. They will chunk down clock once again. Uh, yes, he graduated from Houston. So Jim Nance is a Houston alumni, I believe, class in 1984. For Jim Nance, if I'm not mistaken, Shed at the left wing perimeter. Eight on the shot clock for Shed. Shed at the top now. Five in the shot clock. Shed moves it over. Cryer off the screen. Takes the three. Off the mark. No good. A rebound secured by Solomon Washington for AM. Six turnovers the second half. They only had one going into halftime. AM. Dribble drive inside. Right to the rim. They score with a layup. And they will. They're going to erase this. I think they're going to erase it. Yeah, they're going to erase the layup. They're going to say the foul was committed on a reach in by Cryer before. The layup by Taylor. So that takes away the two points. Inbound for AM and the Sharp commits a quick reach and foul. So Cryer now up to three fouls. Sharp just picked one with a second ticking off the clock there. That's now Sharp with his second. 
Inbound now for AM. Top of the key. Drive, kick, quarter three. Got it. Texas AM making some noise. Six point game. 59 53. 10 minutes left to go. AM, not a strong perimeter shooting team, but that's their fourth made triple of the game. Under 10 minutes left to play. Houston with a possession. Shed. At the right wing perimeter. By the way, San Diego State leads Yale 24 to 12 in the first 11 minutes of action. Outside, Cryer. Cryer at the left wing. 10 in the shot clock. Cryer towards his left. Bounce pass. Back in his way. Low block outside. Cryer. A fake side step to his left. Took the three. Bricked off the back rim and the rebound secured here for AM by Radford. Radford going to slow it down. Off to a Taylor. Taylor crossover at the logo. No good. Bricked off the back rim and the free three. Rebound secured by Shed. Houston by six. The inability to make threes is haunting AM right now. Houston will slow it down. 9.15 left. The ball into the hands to Shed. Shed. He has got sharp open here. 12 in the shot clock. Shed at the right wing. Sends it off top of the key. Roberts. Roberts towards his left. Roberts turns the corner. Drives. Floats at the rudder. Open up the bank right there. It's good for two by Joan Roberts. 61-53 Houston. Under nine minutes left to play. AM has it at the top. Loose ball. Trying to get it back. They do. And they will dribble drive inside again. Radford going to strip. But no. Houston will pick up the reach and foul here. And that's their fourth of this half. And that's number four picked up by Javier Francis. So he has to be careful. They've only played eight guys this entire game as well for Houston. 61-53. Javier Francis yet to score. He's picked up four fouls. And this is actually going to send AM to the free throw line. So Texas AM will shoot free throws. First one is good at the line there for Tyrese Radford. 61 54. Seven point game with 845 left. Hit us up in the chat. Who you guys want to win this one? Type it in. AM or the Cougs of Houston. Type it in. Houston AM. Hit us up in the chat. Second free throw is good. 61-55. Houston up by six with the basketball. 13 for 26 at the free throw line. A&M's left 13 points off the board in this game. Houston has it at the right wing with Shed. Shed towards his left around the perimeter. 15 on the shot clock for Shed. Shed's defended top of the key by... Anderson Garcia sends it out wide, deflected, intercepted by A&M. Here they go ahead of the pack, and we got a reach and foul at midcourt, picked up by Houston. A&M missed the slam dunk and transition there too. So a lot going on, 8.23 remaining. Was he inbounds? Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. wow. Was he inbounds? This might be out of bounds by A&M. Yeah, there was no reach there by Houston. That is out of bounds by A&M. His back heel stepped on the line. So that is out of bounds by A&M, actually. 8.15 left. It goes back to Houston. So the steal was not in the court of play right there. No reach and fall picked by Houston. Houston, four falls. Texas A&M with three. Open up the bank right there. Once again, Jawan Roberts, same place. Floats at the runner. Cashes it home. Cha-ching for two. 63.55. Down to eight minutes left. A&M with the basketball. Out to the wing. They pass it off to the corner. Baseline dribble AM, and they're going to get Roberts on the shooting foul. Francis already has four. Roberts now is up to four. Just picked up his fourth here. Their front court is in deep foul trouble here with under eight minutes left. Still a lot of time left to go in the game. AM's trying to get these guys in as much foul trouble as possible here. We're going to take the, the media timeout 63 55. Four personal falls each between the top two front court guys for Houston. This is getting interesting right now. a and is putting, putting Houston into deep foul trouble. Houston only goes eight, eight guys deep. And uh, we will take the time out here. Ooh. Uh, I'm just going to... For some reason, my camera froze. I'm just going to get it back. So I'm going to stop the stop the stream. Don't worry. Make sure to hang on. It will stop for like five seconds. And I'm going to see if I can get my camera back for some reason. It buffered out once again. So I'm going to stop it, reload my uh, OBS, and then get the camera back on once again here since the camera uh, is not up. All right. So we are back uh, right now. Yeah, for some reason, the camera went off for some reason right there. I think it's because I've been covering a lot of games today. 
or so. So the computer's been on for quite a bit of time. But we're down to 751 left to go. Thanks all for patiently being in here on the channel right now. If you guys are doing the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams on the channel right now. And wow, what a game that we got currently. Four players in double figures for Houston. 16 by LJ Cryer, 15 by Shed, 14 by Sharp, 11 by Roberts. And then Texas A&M, two guys, double figures. Tyrese Radford with 14. He's got 13 rebounds. Manny Obaseki has 11 right now in this game. Wade Taylor's been limited to six points on two for 13 shooting tonight for Wade Taylor to fourth. Hit us up in the chat who you guys want to win this one, Houston or Texas A&M. Type it in. What a battle right now between these two programs. What a game. Jack taking Houston. Welcome in, man. And whoever wins this game has the pleasure to be playing in Dallas against Duke in the Sweet 16. Yeah, a lot of foul calls committed on Houston. Tonight, Texas A&M loves to get to the free throw line. They're top five in free throw attempts per game this season. The question is, can they hit them? And that has not been the case today. 13 for 26 at the free throw line for A&M. Houston is 6 for 7. That's just Texas A&M style. They just go downhill and drive and drive and drive on you. Whereas Houston is going to crash the glass, come up with second chance points. A&M loves to do that too, though. And um, Houston is going to slow down tempo for what they prefer to do. This will be two free throws. First one's good by Radford. Second shot here by Radford. Right down the middle. We got a game right now. 63-57. Six-point game with 7.51 left. And quite a bit of foul trouble for Houston right now that they have. Four personal fouls by Javier Francis. I got three on my graphic for Juwan Roberts. I feel like it's four, though. For some reason, ESPN sometimes struggles to update the box score. Three. It is good by Houston. LJ Cryer steps into one, and he splashes it. 66-57. Seven and a half left to go. Cryer, flamethrower. Third me triple the game. He's shooting 39% from the perimeter this season. Aggies with a possession. Back in their way. That's going to be... An offensive foul picked up, charged to A&M. Emmanuel Sharp puts his body on the line, takes the charge. Tyrese Radford lowers the boom into the jaw of Sharp, and Sharp takes the charge. The officials were right there. That's an offensive foul by A&M. Houston will get the ball back, up by nine. Eight turnover this half, two for A&M. They had just one going into halftime. Houston crosses midcourt. Shed has it now at the March Madness logo. Top of the key for Shed as Cryer open passes. Cryer laces up the three and before we get a foul. Now stop the clock with 7 08. Thirty-four to sixteen. San Diego State is crushing Yale. Right now, that's the fifth personal foul picked up by Texas A&M this half. Five by Houston as well in half two. Much better than half one where they were well over. They had 14 in the first half for Houston as a team. It was seven by Texas A&M in the first half. Houston underneath the hoop gets the inbound. The pass to the perimeter. A&M picks up the reach and foul. Bad foul from behind right there. Charge to Radford. So down to 707 left to go. That's now number six as a team for AM. And the uh, inability to make a free throw has haunted AM this entire game. Radford with four turnovers as well. Inbound goes to the backcourt. Houston by nine, looking to chunk down time as we approach the seven minute mark left to play. Shed has it now at the top of the key. Shed. Horses left around the perimeter. Shot clock's down to six here for Shed. Moves now right wing. Sharp catching fire. Three off the back room. No good. A rebound secured by Taylor for AM. They look to run with it up the floor. 6.45 left. Taylor at the top. Pass off the roll down. And that will be a foul. That's on Shed. 
Big size advantage right there off the big man rolling down to the hoop, and this will be free throws coming up for AM. That was Anderson Garcia who is rolling down off the screener. And he met the backline defense of Shed, which is a major, major mismatch size advantage wise. Anderson Garcia, six foot seven, Shed has six foot one. The first free throw is up and good for Anderson Garcia. He's been reliable today at the free throw line. One of like the lone players in this game. Garcia now is four for five at the free throw line. Second free throw, no good. Missed off the back rim, tipped up, and the rebound controlled by Sharp for Houston. Cougars with it up by eight. And in the backcourt here, well, what's going on? We got the referee stop time, cleanup crew. Yeah, okay, there was a sweaty basketball. Sweaty basketball here as uh, the referees had to stop time. And this will be Houston inbound in the backcourt. 6.33 left. And now the referees will advance it to where they had called the time. So, yeah, this is more towards in between the Houston backcourt and the March Madness logo. So, Houston will advance it near side off the sweaty basketball where the game was stopped. And now they play on. Inbounds the backcourt for Houston. Six and a half left to go. They cross midcourt. Shed at the left wing perimeter now. Shed towards his right. Top of the key. He's defended one on one by Jace Carter. Shed with 12 on the shot clock. Shed down to 10 on the shot clock. Crossover. Dribbles up to the elbow. Shed drives on Carter. Floats to the runner. No good. Strong rebound. Pulled down by Anderson Garcia for AM. Here goes AM looking to run with it. Taylor dribbles up to the elbow. Passes out to the wing. Into the hands here of Solomon Washington. Washington's going to slow it down as we approach six minutes left to go. Back out to the top of the key here with Taylor. Wade Taylor has been held in check in this game. Skip pass, right wing, off to Radford. Radford drives inside the key. Radford, double team, gets it away. Off to Taylor. Shot clock's down to six. Has to launch. Sends one up from the logo. No good off the mark. Battle for the rebound. Houston comes down with it on the floor. Texas A&M is signaling travel here, whereas Houston came up with a rebound and... Yeah, this can be a travel on Houston. They fell down in the hardwood with the basketball backwards. And this will stay A&M ball. Houston unhappy about the call right there's a team. Yeah, that didn't even touch the rim of the three. That's an unlucky break right there for the Cougars. A&M getting real, real lucky. That was that was a three they hoisted up from the logo. and Very tough shot, especially for a team that doesn't make too many threes right now at the... Wing, they'll take a three off the mark. No good. Tipped up to the corner out of bounds. It will be Houston ball. My clock just glitched right now. We're down to 538 left to play. We should be heading to the media timeout as well. So Coming up with under six left to go. 538 remaining in this game. It's going to come up in the next couple minutes in the media timeout here. So we got 538 left. Shed gets the inbound. 5.30 left to go. I'll get the clock back up during the next timeout or so. Shed at the wing. That's going to be an offensive foul picked up. Charge to Houston on the floor. So this is going directly right back to Texas A&M now. 5.29 left. That's on Sharp. That's going to be his third. That's on Emmanuel Sharp around the perimeter. Five twenty nine left to play. Three timeouts by Houston, two by Texas A and M. A lot of tough calls going against the Cougars in this game. Oh no, it's actually on A and M. Wow, they pointed in Houston's in uh, the opposite direction for A and M. This is going to send Houston to the line though. First one is good. Wow, I initially thought it was on Sharp. It's not. It's on thirteen. That should be on 13 to A&M. Yeah, Solomon Washington backed his way. Sharp was sandwiched in between two guys. So 84% free throw shooter just made the first one. Second one is good. Yeah, they, they had initially pointed in A&M's direction. That's a big call right there on the floor. Sharp makes both of the free throws. The ability to make both of the free throws huge for Houston in this game. Texas A&M's left 14 points off the board. 10-point lead, largest one tonight. And got stripped out of bounds. It will stay A&M ball, though. Down to 520 left.
520 left to go. Inbound goes out to the wing for a &M. They'll take a three. Splash. That's made by Tyrese Radford off the inbound. 68-61. a and hanging in this one. 510 left to go. Houston crosses the midcourt logo with Shed. Shed dribbles up, drives inside a paint to the rim. Shed, he gets fouled. And all of two free throws coming up with 504. So Jamal Shed will shoot two here coming up at a charity strike. 504 left to play. If you guys are new to the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified for future live streams as well. Uh, once we get back to the next timeout, I'll see if I can get my clock running once again. Um, there was like a glitch with a system or so, and um, I have to like reset it during a timeout. But Shed, 78.7% free throw shooter, will shoot two here with 504 left to go on the clock. Two shots by Shed. First one, bounced in. It's good. 69-61, Houston. Eighth foul of the half for Texas A&M. Houston's got six. Second shot coming up by Shed. Free throw number two. It is up and no good off the front rim. Rebound secured here for A&M. Five minutes left to play. A&M drives, attacks. Obaseki to the rim. Came up short. No good. Loose ball. Who's got it out of the pack? And it's off of the Aggies. It will go Houston's direction here with 4.53 left. Houston up by 8. A&M, an opportunity to finish down low, and they could not convert, and they lost it out of bounds. Yep, number 0 for A&M. Jace Carter was the last one who touched it at the baseline. Houston slows it down. 4.50 left to play. Cougars cross midcourt. Cryer passes off the Shed. Shed has it at the right wing perimeter. He's working on ta Wade Taylor at the right wing. 12 of the shot clock. Shed crossover. Shed dribbles up now inside a key. Passes outside. Cryer baseline dribble slipped with it. Got back up though. Cryer and we get a tie up. Possession arrow. Houston. Big possession arrow right there in favor of the Cougars. 429 left. Houston will get it once again. Mario, welcome back in, man. 69-61. Houston will get this inbound coming up. Cryer slipped on the floor off the dribble drive at the baseline. Houston's going to burn a timeout now. So two timeouts remaining for both of these teams. We're going to head to the timeout. 69-61. Houston up by eight. Okay, so we're going to take the timeout. I'm just going to uh, reset this. So I'm going to stop it probably for like five seconds, exit out, and then come back in. All right, so we head to the timeout now. 4.29 left to go. I get the time clocks back on once again for me. Yeah, from time to time, for some reason, it will glitch. If you guys are new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams as well. Uh, probably Thursday this week for like some of the Sweet 16 games. I'm going to take some uh, time off. I got a game in person on Wednesday that I have to prepare for still. So I'm going to use Monday and Tuesday to do that. A&M's been limited to 39% from the floor right now in this game. 16 out of 30 at the free throw line. Those 14 missed free throws are really haunting them tonight. San Diego State is crushing Yale 39-19 right now. So it's been basically all chalk in the bracket. Brock, welcome in. Big win for uh, Alabama tonight. So basically, it's been all chalk. There hasn't really been the second round upsets that we anticipated. Hey, enjoy the rest of your night, Vegas. Glad to have you back in, man. Um, winner of this game will take on Duke. That'll be on Friday. Unbelievable. That was one incredible game last night. Creighton won it double overtime over Oregon. They were down by four with a minute left to go, too. Oregon made a massive mistake. Uh, one of their freshmen inbounded the ball to Enfali Dante, who is open. He's not a free throw shooter, though, and he got fouled. And then Dante went to the free throw line and the bonus missed the free throw. Creighton comes back on the other side, buries a three, and forces overtime. Five 
4.29 left to play. Houston has four guys that's doubling up Texas a and with two double-digit scores. 19 by LJ Cryer. He's gone off this half. 16 by Shed. 16 by Sharp. 11 by Roberts. And for AM, they got two guys basically carrying the load. 19 points, 13 rebounds by Tyrese Radford. 11 by Manny Obaseki. Wade Taylor, the fourth, has been shut down. He scored just six points on two for 14 shooting, one for eight from three. That's what the number one defense in the nation can do to you. They have keyed up specifically on Wade Taylor, the fourth, and completely taken him out of a rhythm tonight. So here we go. 429 left to play. Back to action. Inbound coming up for Houston. Sharp at the rim gets fouled. And there'll be free throws coming up as he got contacted. 426 left. Two free throws here for Emmanuel Sharp. And that is going to be on Radford of AM. Ninth personal foul now by AM this half. Sharp and 84.6% free throw shooter. First one right down the middle. That's the guy that you want heading to the free throw line. Houston will have a second free throw coming up here. Marissa, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining in. One more shot by Emmanuel Sharp. 426 left to play. Free to number two, right up and through. 10 point lead for Houston. AM with a possession. Tyrese Radford now in deep foul trouble with four personal fouls. Top of the key, they keep it with Radford though. Into the hands to Obaseki. Obaseki, spin move at the low block. He's double teamed. Obaseki trying to get it away. He does. Bounce pass goes to Taylor. Taylor, tough shot. Not even close. Didn't even hit the rim as Houston comes down with a rebound. Houston will slow down clock. Four minutes left to play. Houston by 10 with the basketball. It's been all chalk so far in the second round, basically, besides Clemson winning over Baylor. Crossover towards his left. It's Shed looking for the exclamation point tonight. Quarter three. Oh, it's good. Bing, bing, a manual sharp trifecta from downtown for the Cougars. 13-point lead. Largest one tonight for Houston. Jamal Shed with a great assist right there to the corner. Sharp left wide open, and he's knocking down his shots tonight. Just a tough, tough possession. He had 13 on the shot clock for Wade Taylor. Taylor's having a rough game. 1-1 one one now for a and First one is good at the free throw line. That would have helped out the cause early on if they were able to make more free throws, but that was not the case. Sharp just picked up his fourth. Second free throw. Got it. So Obiseki makes them both. 11-point game, 3.43 left to play. Manny Obiseki is going to head towards the bench right now. Houston went 11 for 13. They're currently at the free to line. 11 for 13. A&M's 18 for 32. That's not a winning recipe. Missing 14 free throws. Houston crosses midcourt. 3.5 left to play. Chabal Shed. Has the basketball here at the right wing bro. They're down to 12 in the shot clock. He's defended by Radford. Towards his left. Shed dribbles up. We have a foul on the floor picked up. And I believe it's going to be an illegal screen charge to Houston. Yeah, it's going to be on number five. Javier Francis, that's it for him. That's his fifth. That's his fifth by Francis. He has just fouled out. So Francis is done for the game. He did not score either. No points by Francis. Made big impacts, though, defensively. Four blocks by Francis today. So he has just followed out right now. That's his fifth with 322 left. 322 remaining. 11-point lead by Houston. A&M will get the basketball. A&M crosses midcourt. Going fast here. Radford to the rim. He scores up and in over Malik Wilson for two. Making things interesting. A&M... With Alex Caruso, they had a 12-point deficit against Northern Iowa back in 2016 with 45 seconds in the tournament. Came back and forced overtime in that game. Three minutes left to go here. Houston up by nine, going to slow down tempo. Jamal Shedd 
has it at the March Madness logo. Shed is guarded top of the key by Radford. Shed down to eight in the shot clock. Shed, six in the shot clock now. Crossover, dribbles, drives inside off the up fake, puts it up, got it blocked. Put back though is good for two. Jawan Roberts cleans up the miss. It's Houston by 11. 240 left to play. And the Texas A&M at the wing. Houston's going to have a foul call against them here, I think, at the wing. On the reach in, it seemed to be, I believe. Got a lot of fouls in this game. Yeah, it's going to be charged to Shed. So Shed picks up the personal foul. This will send bonus free throws here by Taylor. They got some deep foul trouble right now. They're not going to have enough guys to play in this game. Francis has fouled out. Roberts has four. Sharp has four. Shed just picked up his fourth. And the first free throw is good by a and 76-66. 239 left to go. If you're Houston, you got to use as much clock as possible this next possession because you got multiple guys with four falls. You got one guy that's fouled out. You've only gone to an eight man rotation tonight. Both of the free throws is good. All right, good. Nine point game. Austin, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining in, man. 239 left. Houston will get the inbound. Texas AM, much better this, this half at the free throw line. They're nine for 12. First half, they went 11 for 22, and that is the reason why they're trailing in this game by nine. Houston with the inbound. Two and a half left to play. They cross midcourt. Double team able to get it away into the hands here of Shed. Shed it dribbles towards the right wing. Shed it inside pro hop. Kick out corner. Sharp with a three. Oh, he hits it. Bang, bang. Emmanuel Sharp keeps on firing away for the Cougs. 79-67. What a game by him tonight. Missed shot at the rim. A&M able to get it up. Obiseki down low. Got it stripped in a reach and follow. Picked up by Houston. That's charged to Cryer. And that's Cryer's fourth. This is the follow trouble right now for Houston. Javier Francis has fallen out. He's got five. The rest of the starters with four each. Robert Sharp, Cryer, and Shed all have four. Right now, another foul is sending those guys out of the game. And then one each between the bench guys, Alath, Wilson, and Dunn. They put a 57% free throw shooter at the line here on Mandy Obaseki. 2-10 left to play. Obaseki shooting in the... He'll have two now. Double bonus. That's the 10th committed by Houston. First one's good. Seventy nine sixty eight. Two ten left to play. Texas A&M played one of the toughest schedules in America this season. Second free throw is good. 10-point game. 79-69 with 2-10 left. Houston's got four other starters with four falls. One starter has followed out right now. Some pressure here shown in the backcourt by A&M. Inbound goes to Houston into the hands to Shed. Houston looking to get past midcourt. That's the goal. They are able to with Cryer. He gets it over to his man. Wide open underneath the hoop. It is a, two, it is a layup there by Wilson for two. 81-69. Great job with a vision up the floor. Blocked out of bounds. Taylor downhill to the rim. Got the shot blocked. It will stay A&M ball. 152 remaining. 152 left to play right now. Down by 12 for A&M. They'll get the inbound underneath the hoop. And we're going to have a timeout here taken on the floor. So Houston will burn a timeout. Houston's down to one timeout left. A&M's got two right now. 152 left to play as we take the timeouts. What a pass. An incredible assist in the backcourt. Cryer just swung it over to the wide open man underneath the hoop. That was number eight, Malik Wilson, who scored the buckets. If you guys are new to this stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams on the channel. I cover play-by-play -play basketball action, college hoops, NBA games here on the channel. And uh, A&M's making it tough for Houston tonight. Like, no lie, this is a tough matchup for Houston that A&M just keeps on going full attack mode in this matchup, putting these guys into foul trouble. But Houston just always responding tonight. Big three after big three after big three. And you got to like how they're shooting the threes for the Cougars if you're a Cougars fan, especially Emmanuel Sharp. He has been lights out tonight. Six for 12 from the perimeter by Sharp. He gets the game ball for this one. 24 points, 
three main threes by LJ Cryer. It was the Emmanuel Sharp show tonight with his 24 points pouring in six main threes. 152 left. Inbound. They and then wide open. Dunks it down with a two handed flush. 81 71. Houston now will inbound. Goes over to Malik Wilson. Crosses midcourt. Wilson gets fouled with one. It's going to be 138 left to play. Yeah. Mistake defensively there by Houston. You don't see that ever. That they uh, did not know who they were guarding off the inbound. That was a mistake by them. 10 point lead. Free throws coming up here by Houston in the double bonus at the line. Two shots with Malik Wilson. 60.6% free throw shooter. First pair of free throws tonight. First one no good. Miss from short. That's not the guy that you want shooting at the line. Good to get that ball into the hands of Sharp. Sharp's been excellent in this game. Sharp's perfect at the line. 4 for 4. Not a 61% free throw shooter. Second free throw here by Houston. And he gets it. So 11 point lead now. 138 left to play. A&M with a possession. A&M down low at the rim. Blocked off the glass. Houston comes up with a basketball. They got it stripped. A&M again. Quarter three. Oh, they hit it. Wade Taylor off the steal in the quarter. Initially, it was blocked by Houston. And he jacked up the three and converted. 126 left. Was there a technical after this was over? It was blocked off the glass. Houston had a strip. Taylor, step back jumper, made the three. So it's 82-74, but was there something after the play or something? Why is the official burning time right there? Official review. Maybe to see if his foot was on the line or not. Okay, so I think they're probably going to check to see if it was a three or a two for him on the step back here. Let's see, three or a two. Oh, that's a two. His foot was on the line. 82-73. So one foot was on the three-point line off the step back there. 126 left to go. They have docked it down to a two. So one foot behind, one foot on. They have docked it down to a two. Yes, I think Gonzaga's got a chance up against Purdue. Gonzaga lost back in November by 10 against Purdue. They were entirely different, though. A couple of new transfers on their team, while Purdue had mostly the same guys. Houston gets the inbound, and a loose ball foul committed by A&M with 124. One twenty-four left to play now. Back to the free throw line will go Houston in the double bonus. Cryer. This should be Cryer that's heading to the line. He got fouled from behind, and it is. So LJ Cryer, 87.9% free throw shooter. Yeah, they got two really good, reliable guys at the line. Cryer, Sharp, and then Shed for their guards, who are great free throw shooters. So Cryer will shoot two. First one's up, first one's through. 83-73 now for Houston. Second shot coming up at the line here for LJ Cryer. And no good. Around the rim and out. Missed the shot. 10 point lead for Houston. AM comes up with a rebound. Off the floor. They'll take a three straight away. They got it. Tyrese Radford hanging in the game. That's going to be a two. His foot was on the three point line again. So instead of the score being 83 77, they've made deep twos with one foot behind, one foot. On the line. You you have to be aware of where the three-point line is. If you're the guards of Texas A&M. You got to be well aware of where that three-point line is. Parker, welcome in. Thanks for joining in. This is back on the official review once again. They're looking at this one. So official review. Whether this will be a three or a two. As the referees will take a look at this one right now off the step back made. Tyrese Radford at the top. Off the step back. I, I believe that's going to be a two. His front, very, very front is on the black. Yeah, that, that that's going to be a two, I believe, right there. I don't, I don't see a space of uh, the light brown hardwood. Yeah, that's going to be a two. That's going to be a two. That's 
centimeters on the three-point line. His front left foot was centimeters on the three-point line right there. So that is two points docked away from Texas A&M that they should have had for three. So instead of an 83-77 game, it's 83-75. So instead of a six-point game, it's an eight-point game because of two made jumpers that they called a deep two on. They had one before at the right corner. Minute 16 left to go as my clock's a little forward here. Inbound and... Ooh. This going out of bounds here. Yeah, Texas A&M just forced a Houston turnover. Let's see. Cryer off a dribble. Stepped out of bounds. So Cryer stepped out of bounds. It's going to be Texas A&M basketball. Big turnover. Down by eight. We'll see what A&M can do here. Inbound. Here's a three. They jack up quickly. Oh, they hit it. Oh, man. Wade Taylor, ice cold, just buried the three. 83-78, inbound. A&M gives a foul with 104. Taylor coming off the screen, took the three and made the three. Wow. That's urgent offense there for A&M. Wow. Wow. 83-78. Free throws coming up here for Houston and the double bonus. 104 left to play. If you guys are new in the stream, smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Ring the notification bell as well. This game ain't over yet right now. Sharp. Trying to go in for the inbound. And he got chopped up by Radford. Or it was Taylor. Taylor who picked up the foul. Taylor just picked up his first. They got four personal falls between Washington, Obaseki, and Radford. And then for Houston, deep fall trouble with Roberts, Sharp, and Shed all with four. Francis has five. He's already fouled out. He fouled out with like six minutes left. What a game. A lot of contact there between Sharp and Taylor. Should have free free throws coming up here. 104 left to go. Houston at the free throw line with Emmanuel Sharp. Sharp, an 84.6% free throw shooter who is perfect today. Four for four. Two big shots. He's been the player of the game. 24 points, bearing six main threes for Sharp tonight. First free throw. Got the bounce. It's good. At the line. Makes the first one. Six point lead here for Houston. Sharp with a second one upcoming. Free throw number two right down the middle. 85-78 Houston. Final minute left to play. Texas A&M gets the inbound. The Aggies cross midcourt. Radford puts the ball into the hands to Taylor. Taylor takes the three contested. Oh, what a block there, but they're going to call it a foul. Committed by Cryer. And he picks up his 50 is done for LJ Cryer. That's going to be three coming up in the free throw line. Way to Taylor. Jumper. Yeah, Cryer got his hands in the process. So Cryer got his hand. That's going to be three here, folks, at the free throw line. Oh my gosh, these fouls are crushing for Houston tonight. Cryer just fouled out, finishes with 20 points. 55.3 left to go. Three shots of the free to line for Wade Taylor to fourth. First one. Around and in. Got the bounce. 85-79. Six-point game. Hit us up in the chat. Who you guys are rooting for to win this one? Houston or Texas A&M? Type it in the chat. Second free throw. Got it. 85-80. Here comes A&M. They're playing to the final second in this one. Creighton was down with one minute left yesterday against Oregon. Forced double overtime. Came back and won. 84.5% free throw shooter. Looking for three. And he got them all. 85-81. Away. Taylor the fourth capitalizes. Here we go. Houston. Inbounds to the backcourt. Sharp. Double team. Sharp gets fouled immediately. And Sharp's been reliable. Perfect. Six for six at the free throw line. 53 seconds left. We'll shoot two coming up. 
What a game. Coming right down to the wire here, folks. A&M's hitting some big-time shots right now. They're hitting some big-time shots with threes and stuff to get themselves back in. And Manny Obaseki just followed out for A&M. So he finishes with 15 points. So he has just followed out for Obaseki. This has been a foul fest in this matchup here. Already falling out, Javier Francis and LJ Cryer for Houston. Four personal falls between Robert Sharp and Shedd. In this game. And then Obaseki just followed out with 5-4. Committed by Washington and Radford. For a and for fouls. Two free throws. Emmanuel Sharp. Perfect. At the line today. 6-for-6. Six 84% six. free throw shooter. Will shoot two. Right now. Critical pressure free throws with 53 seconds left. First one's up. First one's good. He's been the player of the game tonight. 86-81 Houston. This A&M team really giving it all tonight in this game. They play a style that not a whole lot of teams play. Sharp missed the second one. Here goes A&M down by five. 50 seconds remaining. Radford dribble drive to the cup. Going back door. Missed the layup. Tipped around. Offensive rebound. Oh, they put it up and then they score for two in Washington. 86-83. 44 seconds left. Sharp in the corner. He's trapped in the corner. And they have two timeouts left. They got one off. 41 seconds. 41 seconds remaining right now. Houston's going to take a timeout. What a game. 86, 83, 41 seconds left to play in this one. If you guys are doing the stream, smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Ring the notification bell as well. What a game. 31 and 4 Houston down to the wire against 21 and 14 Texas A&M. This Texas A&M team plays a style of basketball that not many teams go about doing. They just drive and drive and drive and attack and wear you out and try to put you into foul trouble. That's how the entire game's gone. 25 personal fouls by Houston, 20 by A&M tonight. As we're down to 41 seconds left. Both teams with one timeout remaining. Both teams in the double bonus. Possession arrow next time around will go to A&M. Forty-one point one seconds left to go. Hit us up in the chat who you guys like to win here. Houston or A&M? Type it in. If you're new in the stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. L.J. Cryer and Javier Francis have both fallen out for Houston. Manny Obiseki has fallen out for Texas A&M. Houston in their backcourt will get the inbound. 28 on the shot clock, 42 on the game clock, 14 second differential. Houston looking to get the inbound here in their backcourts. Inbound goes to Sharp, 86% free throw shooter in the backcourt here. Into the hands of Shed. Shed crosses the midcourt logo, 20 seconds, 34 on the game clock. Shed going to slow it down. A bucket here would win it for Houston most likely. 25 seconds now. Houston with it. Shed. Shot clock's down to 10. 14 second differential. Shed. Crossover. Dribbles up down low. Bounce pass. Got it stripped. It's a turnover. Pass ahead here. Here goes Taylor. 15 seconds to the rim. Floats to the runner. No good off the glass. Battle for the rebound. Goes back to AM. They float it up. No good. Tipped out of bounds. With 9.6, it will stay AM basketball. 9.6 left to go. Two chances there inside the key. AM couldn't get it a drop. 9.6 seconds left. They're going for twos. And they missed the mark on both of those shots. What a game. What a game here, folks. 9.6 seconds remaining. Shot clock will be turned off. A&M will get the inbound coming up. The officials will take a look at this to see who last touched it. Actually, they initially rolled it out of bounds by Houston. Number 11... For Houston, it went off of that. So that's close. Between Radford and Dunn. They initially rolled it out of bounds by Dunn. The officials are taking a look at it right now. Whether this is out of bounds by Radford or Dunn. Wow, big call coming up by the officials right now. Big call by the officials. Whether that was out of bounds by Dunn of Houston or Radford of A&M. From that over the view cam, it looks like it's out by Dunn. That looks like Dunn touched it last on the over the rim cam right there. 
But Radford, did he come in late? Uh, that, ooh, that left hand of Radford. Did that come in late right there? That's the key. And the officials are going to have to convene here. They put back an, another second, too. 10.1. 10.1 seconds left to go. There's a floater by Radford. It bricked off the back room. Radford tried to save it. Him and Dunn are uh, the Houston. And then the ball got knocked out of bounds with 10.1. 10.1 seconds left to go. If you guys are new in the stream, smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. What a game. This will be inbound Texas A&M. Texas A&M will get the inbound. So it will be Texas A&M possession. They'll burn their final timeouts. No timeouts remaining for A&M. One timeout remaining for Houston right now. What a game, folks. This will be a quick 30-second timeout here for A&M. Both teams in a double bonus possession arrow to A&M. Shot clock's turned off 10.1. Seconds left to play. Winner will take on Duke over in Dallas in the Sweet 16 on Friday. Hit us up in the chat. Who guys want for this one here? Houston or Texas A&M? Ten point one seconds. What a battle! Houston's got a timeout left. A&M's out of timeouts. A&M was so good down the stretch of the season. 7-1 in their last eight entering this game tonight. Looked like they were dead in the water. They were 15-13, and 6-9 and in the SEC in late February outside of the bracket. A&M will get the inbound. 10.1 seconds left to play. Here we go. Texas A&M, the inbound passer underneath will be Tyrese Radford. They will inbound underneath their hoop here. Radford with 10.1 seconds left to play here for A&M. Looking to inbound it as he gets the basketball right from the official. Radford looking to inbound. Lobs it all the way to the perimeter. Snags it up. It's Anderson Garcia. Eight seconds. They jack up a three straight away. Off the back room. No good. Missed by Taylor from the logo. Another three came up short by Taylor. And we got a tie up here. Forced by Houston with one second. Possession arrow A&M. Wade Taylor took a three from the logo. Came up well off the mark. He came back with a rebound. Another three falling away. Missed off the mark. And then a tie-up. Looked like Malik Wilson came down with a rebound. And the referees rolled tie-up. 86-83. They put back a, about two-tenths of a second. Wow, it looked like Malik Wilson clearly came up with a rebound and the referees came in and called tie-up. So this will be Texas A&M basketball coming up here. Let's see, this three falling away by Radford, no good. And then, yeah, Wilson eventually came out of it with the basketball there. A&M had it and then lost it. Wilson eventually came down, but they called it tie-up initially before Wilson came down with it. So Houston burns their final timeout. One second left. 1.2 remaining here, folks. If you guys are new in the stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and yes, they can get a, a three-point shot off with 1.2 seconds. That is ample time. OG Onyanobi back in the bubble against the Celtics got one off with .5 to win the game. 1.2 seconds left to go. A&M, 14 losses a season taken. Houston, 31-4 and four down to the wire. What a game. 1.2 seconds remaining here. A&M, a 29% perimeter shooting team. Bottom 10 in the nation. Going to have to rely on a three-point shot to force overtime. Go figure. Unbelievable game. 1.2 seconds left to go. A&M with an inbound. It will be underneath their hoop here. A&M, 1.2 seconds left to play. Here we go. Looking for the inbound. A&M bounce pass, top of the key. They'll take the three for overtime. Oh, they got it. Bang, bang. We're going into overtime. Anderson Garcia. Straight away three. The flame flower knocks it down. 
It is going into overtime here, folks. What a game. What a game. Let's get that OT hype in the chat. Garcia wide open, top of the key. Took the three. Money. OT. Bang, bang. Let's get the OT hype out there. He launched it off in time. He launched it off with like 0.7. And they got all the momentum. They were down by double digits for a and What a game. This team plays a style that not many teams play. And that style really pays off tonight for a and Holy smokes. Overtime, here we go. Lonely Satellite with a dono. Really appreciate it with a dono. Thanks so much for the dono. Let's get that dono hype out on the stream here for Lonely Satellite. Legend on the channel. Wow. What a game. If you guys are new in the stream, smash the thumbs up. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell as well. We're going to have five more minutes remaining right now of this one. 23 by Radford. 16 by Taylor, 15 by Obaseki, who has followed out. 12 by Garcia, who just sent this game to overtime with a three. Go figure. That's his lone three-point shot attempt at a game, and he made it. Wow. Holy smokes. Houston, led by four guys in double figures. 27 by Sharp, 20 by Cryer. 16 by Shed, 13 by Roberts. Here's the fall trouble. Right now, five personal falls by Obaseki, four by Washington for Texas A&M, four by Radford. Houston's in some deep fall trouble. They've only played eight guys tonight for Houston. Two guys have fallen out out of the starting five. Javier Francis, with he's fallen out. LJ Cryer fallen out. He's got 20. And then four personal fouls on the brink of falling out is Juwan Roberts, Emmanuel Sharp, and Jamal Shedd. Houston's not going to have enough guys to play this game. Gee. Holy smokes. A&M. Unbelievable. Like this team, they were a preseason top 20 team. Tonight, they're playing like it. For sure, besides the free throws. They, they'd be on to the next round if they made their free throws already. Here we go. Houston will go right to left on the floor. White, white jerseys for the Cougars. Red numbers, red letters. Texas A&M on a 13-3 run in the final minute 17 of regulation. A&M maroon uniforms, white numbers, white letters. We are underway for overtime now. And Houston controls the opening tip. Shed sends it over to Sharp. Out to Shed once again. Shed's got Dunn on the floor. Sharp in the corner. Malik Wilson and number 13, Jawan Roberts. Shed at the left wing perimeter. They're 12 in the shot clock. Shed. Guarded one on one here by Jace Carter. Shed rises for the three, takes it off the rim, no good. They try to check down the rebound. Shed gets it. Nice save there by Jerron Roberts. Skip past the wing. Sharp takes the three. Oh, he hits it. Emmanuel Sharp, the player of the game tonight, if they win, as he sizzles the triple. What an effort by number 13 of Houston, saving that basketball. He flew all the way into the announcer stand over. A laptop in the process. Jawad Roberts, the all-time hustler right there, right into the laptop of the announcer stand. Texas A&M looking to respond right now. Both of the teams, by the way, are in uh, the double bonus as well. A&M with a possession. And they just turned it over. Bad pass from the corner to the elbow as Houston just intercepted it. Four minutes left to go, approaching the mark. Houston up by three, looking to add to it. Shed has it here at the March Madness logo. Sharp's been the player of the game tonight here for Houston. He has made seven threes. Shed at the wing. Moves it off to Sharp, off the screen. Takes the three, off the back rim, no good. Battle for the rebound, pulled down by AM. It was Garcia who collected the defensive rebound. 3.45 left, a and with it. Looking to push it, Radford, the dribble drive, attacks. Loads to the shot, and he gets fouled from the back. And if that's on Sharp, that might be on Sharp right there from behind. I think so. And he has just fallen out. The player of the game for Houston with 341 has just fallen out. Emmanuel Sharp 
is done for the game with five. So they played eight players tonight. Three of those players now have followed out for Houston. And two more on the brink with Robertson Shed. Holy smokes. What a game. Three forty one left. Sharp with thirty has just fallen out. And there'll be free toes here. Two shots by AM and a double bonus. First one he missed. No good at the line by Radford. Radford is playing with four personal fouls. Him and Solomon Washington. Roberts and Shedd are both playing with four as well. Radford. Second free throw. Got it. 89-87. 3.41 left to play. Houston has possession. Houston 16 for 21 at the free throw line. Texas A&M's missed 15. 25 for 40. At the left wing done. Puts the ball into the hands here to Ramon Walker. Number three. First time on the floor today. Jamal Shedd has it at the right wing perimeter. So Walker's on the court right now for Houston. Shed has an eight on the shot clock. Slowing down tempo. Shed crossover. Shed towards his left. Guarded at the top of the key. Shed three in the shot clock. Shed has to launch. Takes up a three. No good off the back rim. Oh, he got fouled. He got fouled on a three-point shot attempt. And it's by Wade Taylor who picks up the personal foul. And this will be three. Coming up in the free throw line by Jamal Shed. Up fake. Leaning forward, and Taylor got him in the landing zone. 3.11 left to go. This game is on TNT if you're looking for it in the U.S. First free throw. He missed it. Shed no good on free throw number one. We'll have two more coming up. Played the entire game tonight for Shed. 78.7% at the free throw line. 16 points. Second free throw here by Shed. It's up and it's good. 90-87 to 87 Houston. Third free throw coming up here at the line by Shed with 3.11 left. Free throw number three is good. Four point advantage for Houston. 91 87. Here goes Texas AM. 310 left to go on the clock. They cross midcourt. Ball gets put into the hands to Wade Taylor to Fort. He has it now at the March Madness logo. Slides it over to Radford. Radford playing with four personal fouls. Weaves his way inside the key. Back outside Taylor. Shot clock down to 15. Under three left to go. Taylor drives down the hill. Floats up the runner. No good. A rebound. Secure by Houston by Ramo Walker. Houston up by four with the basketball. They slow it down once again. Shed has it now at the edge of the March Madness logo. What a game between these two teams. 2.35 left to play. 12 in the shot clock for Shed. Shed has it here at the top of the key. If you're just joining us, Texas A&M trail by 10 with two minutes left to go. Oh, with a dime right there. Shed with an assist over to the cutter back door. It's a layup score by Jawan Roberts. Six point lead for Houston A&M. Floats up the shot. There's contact here and we get a foul. That's going to be charged to Ramon Walker, who just stepped on the court. So that's his first. What a dime by Shed. A no-look pass off to a backdoor cutter. And that was Malik Wilson. Malik Wilson, number eight, scored it behind. Yeah, Roberts was right next to him. It was Malik Wilson who went for the cutter there, backdoor, and scored. 70.4% at the free throw line for Radford. Shooting two in the double bonus. First one, no good. Missed the free throw. Too many missed free throws, and that could be the difference maker tonight. 18 for 24 by Houston. Texas A&M, 63% at the free throw line, 27 for 43. Radford's got 24, 14, and 6. Points, rebounds, assists in this game tonight. Down by 6 here for A&M. Second free to Radford, got it. Right down the middle, 5-point game. 2-19 two, left to play. So I'll get this clock rolling once it hits 2-13, a little ahead. Here we go, now it's on 2-13. Houston crosses the midcourt logo, up by 5. Shed. Puts the ball into the hands to Walker on the outside. Back into the hands to Shed here. 15 on the shot clock. Shed it. Dribbles towards his right. Has it now at the edge in the March Madness logo. Two minutes even left to go. 10 on the shot clock for Shed. Shed 
Has a man open in the corner with Wilson. Crossover dribbles. Drives shed. Floats at the runner. Off the back room. No good. A rebound secured by Radford here for AM. Here goes Radford at the wing. Radford crossover. 145 left. Attacks into the paint. Finds an opening and he lays it up and in. Three point game. 93 to 90. Minute 35 left to play. Houston going to slow it down. What a game. If you guys are new on the stream, spike the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe here. Wow. This is my third stream by uh, tonight, by the way. Holy smoke. Shed at the top. Sends it over. Here's a three. No good. Skid it off the rim. Offensive rebound, Houston. They got it off the putback. Ramon Walker playing big minutes right now with a putback good for two. 105 left to go. 18 second chance points for Houston. Oh, it's a big three for Texas A&M. 95-93. So quick up the floor. I believe it was by Taylor. Yes, it was. He got 19. Final minute. 50 seconds left to play. Shad crosses midcourt. 20 seconds in the shot clock. 45 in the game clock. Houston with possession. Shad slows it down. 12 in the shot clock. 38 seconds. Here we go. 27 second differential shot clock and game clock shed at the left wing pro hop inside a key shed mid-range Oh, he hits it trouble shed bang bang gets the drop. It's good for two And it's a four-point lead for Houston A&M with a 3d airballed it out of bounds for Texas A&M and panic mode as they took one from the logo and they missed it 24 seconds left What a game What a game Jamal Shedd, legendary, coming in clutch, playing with four fouls, no problem. Got my team on my back tonight, playing the entire game. They put back an additional second, 25 seconds left. Inbound coming up for Houston. They get the inbound with 24, and then they're not going to give a foul until 21. So Houston will head to the free to line here. 21 seconds left with Shedd, heading to the free to line. Wow. If you guys are new, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. This might be the 25,000 subscriber stream, by the way. I haven't even checked. So, you guys are the legends on the channel. We enter 9 subscribers away from 25,000 before I started. If you're new on the channel, smash the thumbs up, help out this uh, stream. Hit 25,000 subscribers here with my channel. Two shots of the free time I shed. First one. No good. Missed it short. Shed missed the first one. He'll have a second one with 21.5 seconds left. He has played the entire game. 20 points, 6 for 9 tonight at the free to line. Second shot coming up here by Shed. This is a big one. Free to number 2. Got it. Got the bounce. 98-93, 21.5 seconds left to go. Timeouts will be taken here by Kelvin Sampson for Houston. Wow. Unbelievable game. Shed with a monster pro hop inside the key and floated it up. Insane. 21.5 seconds left to go. A&M played the heck of out of their team in this game. Holy smokes. A&M. They're just super physical. They matched up Houston down to the wire here. I mean, what a battle. A lot of the other top seeds are blowing past like mid-major opponents in the second round. Houston got a battle with an with a in-state rival from an hour and a half away. Hey, thanks so much, Vegas. Really appreciate it. So we hit 25K here on the channel. You guys are legends. Here on the stream. You guys are awesome. Absolutely legendary here. So we'll all, always remember this stream. Being a big one today. Thanks so much for the sub CM. Really appreciate it. John in the stream. Welcome on board. Buffalo. Cedric. Welcome in. Mike on the channel. Welcome on board. Hit us up in the chat by the way. Who you guys like to uh, win this one. Who you're a fan of here. Type it in. Kooks for Houston. Type in Houston. Go A&M for Texas A&M. What a game. 98-93. 21 seconds left.
What a battle. One timeout by AM. Houston's out of timeouts. 98-93. AM will get the inbound here all the way in their backcourt. AM inbounds at 20 seconds left. AM attacks downhill and Houston commits a foul. Gonna have to see who this is on. Flying in from behind was Malik Wilson, number eight. He's not yet in any foul trouble. With 18.2, they tried a the football uh, style play right there with Taylor off the inbound. Passed it off to his man and then took it a distance. And if that's on Shed, he will be out. But oh yeah, that that is on Shed. I thought it was from Wilson in the back. Shed is done. He has just fallen out. That's his fifth. So it was on Shed. Wilson came in flying from behind, blocked it off the glass, but it was on Shed out in front. Yeah, not much contact there. Really not much contact right there. Charge the Shed. Wow. 18.2 seconds left. Shed is done. If this goes into another overtime, Texas a and is going to win this thing. If they somehow force another OT. Because Shed is done. Cryer's done. Francis is done. Sharp is done. Roberts has four. That would be the entire starting five falling out if Roberts picks up a fifth. Like, they're not going to have enough guys to be playing this game. 18.2 seconds left to go. A&M at the free to line shooting in the double bonus. First one's good by Wade Taylor. 98-94 right now. Second free throw here by Wade Taylor right down the middle. With a three-point game, 98-95. 18.2, Houston will get the inbounds. Shed's no longer on the floor. Malik Wilson will be the inbound passer. They have also Emmanuel Sharp and LJ Cryer have followed out. Javier Roberts has followed out as well. Inbound in the backcourt, looking to inbound it, and they will to the corner. Number 20, Ryan Elvin, who is averaging one point per game, got fouled with 17 seconds. A senior from Round Rock, Texas, in a big spot here at an NCAA tournament game for a chance to go up by two possessions. My uh, camera, for some reason, froze. I'm just going to call it here for the audio right now unless we get to a timeout. What a game. What a game here. So if you guys are listening to me, uh, just keep on listening. My camera, for some reason, just froze up. Three for four at the free to line this season for Ryan Elvin. 17 seconds left. Elvin will shoot at the free to line right now. 17 seconds left to go. So Elvin will shoot at the free to line. Two shots in the double bonus. So my camera just froze up. First one's no good. Off the back rim. Yeah, if we go to a timeout, I'll see if I can reset it. I don't know why it keeps on freezing up. Second shot here by Elvin for Houston. Houston second free throw with Elvin. Got it. Four-point lead, 99-95. 17 seconds remaining. Inbound, Texas A&M gets it. Crosses midcourts. Attacking downhill to the rim, and I think they're going to have another timeout taken here on the floor. Yes, they will. So A&M will take their final timeout, 13.4. Left to go. Yeah, my uh, screen is frozen with my camera, yeah. I'm going to see if I can reset my camera here for a moment. So I'm going to I'm going to unhook for a brief moment since we've gone to a quick timeout. It's going to buffer for like 5 seconds, going to unhook my camera, plug it back in. 9995, 13 seconds left if you're just joining in here. Just got it back plugged in um, right now. Yeah, it's buffered a couple times today. I've I've been streaming since the early game, Colorado against Marquette, so maybe it's running on um, not much time or so. But it's back working right now for this one. What a game. Yeah, I, I had Houston in my bracket going all the way, looking very vulnerable in this one right now in this game. A&M plays a very, very uh, difficult style for a chaotic style that is very tough for teams to match up to. On a 
one day. Here we go. A&M about to get the inbound. 13 seconds left to get the inbound. They'll take a quick three. No good off the back rim. Houston crashes the glass for the defense. A rebound. And the Cougars will head to the free throw line with Malik Wilson. 8.9 seconds left to go. Eight point nine seconds left to play. Houston with two shots coming up in the double bonus. He had a look there with Radford from the top, just sent it off to the left side of the rim. No good. Last team to win after four players followed out. You have to go back to 1987 with UTEP in the round of 64. First free throw, no good. Missed around the rim and out by Wilson. 8.9 seconds here. This one would put them up by five with a made free throw. Big shot right here coming up at the line for Malik Wilson for Houston. 8.9 free throw number two is good. Triple digits right now on the board. 100 to 95. Both of these teams are out of timeouts. Eight seconds left. Texas A&M. Gets the inbound off to Taylor. Crosses midcourt. Seven seconds. Taylor kick out corner. Here's a three. No good off the rim. Another chance. Two seconds. They'll go up. You don't have enough time to get off a shot. Doesn't matter. And the game is over. 100 to 95. What a game. Houston wins in overtime with multiple guys falling out. They have found a way to win. They had four starters follow out in tonight's game, and they won somehow, some way. 100 to 95, the final as Houston wins over AM. Unbelievable game. Wow. Fifth time that all the one and two seeds in NCAA tournament history have reached the Sweet 16 going back to 1979. What a run for Texas A&M, but at the very end, Houston comes out on top in overtime. Holy smokes, what a game. It'll be Houston versus Duke on Friday out in Dallas for the one versus four matchup. So only one team from Texas is still alive in the tournament playing at Dallas on Friday with Houston. If you guys are new before I do sign off, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell as well. Wow, what a game here. Just crazy. 28 fouls by Houston. 24 by A&M. In the end, A&M missed 16 free throws. They went 29 for 45 at the free throw line. And that's a big difference maker today in this game. Why A&M's not heading to the Sweet 16. They gave Houston all they could handle in this matchup. Holy smokes. What a game. Came all the way down to the wire between these two teams tonight as we now go final. 100 to 95. Gonna sign off here to the channel members. Appreciate you guys for joining in on the 25,000 subscriber stream tonight. All channel members get a shout out at the end of each and every single one of my live streams. We have Jason, Warren, Rajeep, I am Ghost, Russell, John, Mark, Kelly, Jeffrey, Vegas, Oink, Oink, Michael, Katie, Bradley, Daniel, Derek, Sister Surround, Mario, Guido, Tristan. SG Sports Talk, Ice Ice Baby, Robin, Melinda, and Jack City. Thanks all for joining in, being a part of the stream tonight for this one. Houston wins over Texas A&M. Final score, 100-95. to Houston will take on Duke in the Sweet 16. What a battle. They had four starters foul out, and they still won for the Cougars in this game as we wrap up. Thanks so much all for joining in, and enjoy the rest of your Sunday night.